Hello everyone, welcome back to Valverde Broadcasting's commentary, emporium and uh, shop. What? Um, <laughs> it comes with a free frog head. Um, <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, so, <laughs> Sorry, you said it's your fair. Face. Um, it's <laughs> Today we're going to be uh, doing a commentary on Total Recall, the original Arnold one um, from 1980, Mr. Black. Uh, when was it? 87? <laughs> 80, uh, no, no, no. It was way later than 1990. No, 90, of course, 1990. Kick-Ass 80s Action from 1990. <laughs> <laughs> um, directed, of course, by Paul Verhoeven. <laughs> Paul Verhoeven. And lots of returners from uh, Robocop. Yes. This and Starship Troopers and Robocop make this kind of loose Verhoeven futurism trilogy. That's right. Uh, there you go. Very cool. Um, so that's all the intro you're getting. Tough shit. Because <laughs> I already did one and it fucked up. Um, so if you get your total recalls, if you recall your recall to uh, the first bit, <laughs> the start, um, and press play at the sound of the now, now. For the memories of a lifetime, recall, recall, recall. <laughs> the most under underused jingle ever. That's yeah. true, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I just don't, I don't think it gets the love. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this, like I said, there's quite a lot of returners from from Robocop. In, in, <laughs> in, uh, in, I mean, Jerry Goldsmith comes and does the music, but uh, uh, Frank Urost, or oh, I can't pronounce that. It's back editing, and obviously you got Verhoeven, you have got Jos Vacano, cinematography. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot comes over, and obviously Ronnie Cox, and yeah. uh, you know, there's quite a few here's and there's. Um, it's definitely like tonally, it's fucking way like Robocop, and, it, and again, yeah. and Starship Troopers, it's got that. Kind yeah, of thing. it's in that pool, isn't it? Very much so, yeah. And this is why Verhoeven didn't do Robocop 2. Grogo. He, he was doing this. Oh, okay. He was way busy doing this, so uh, yeah. Which is, I don't know, I don't know how that would have been. I'm kind of glad he didn't in a way. I'm sort because of, it's good to be able to disassociate Robert, Robert Cook, who I really like, but it's good to be able to hold it away and say it's not really a true I, sequel. It's funny, yeah. I, I it's weird because I kind of go like I don't think, yeah, I don't think the cynicism of the first film would. It, it, it works really well as as a as as with that, that huge amount of meta text of a guy who made arguably one of the most successful sequels of all time making a film about sequels is sent in a way like there's that sort of I quite like it I, yeah you know, being being a Kirshner film being anyway Kirshner, yeah it's got that nice kind of again it's all about the meta text yeah this is kind of like a, I always felt this is like a slightly evil version of the Superman credits yeah that kind of that optical effect which I think I always view as a kind of uh, this effect is kind of a a precursor to the kind of metal rods that come down out of the machine and melt. The, uh, okay. Yeah. You know, interesting. The, the, yeah. Melt the the core, the the, the icy core. The, the reactor. The reactor. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot to, of that. We isn't used it? to. Uh, there's a there's a mini DV tape for me somewhere, where I've drawn a um, <laughs> I've drawn a quarto on in pen, <laughs> and the eyes are above my belly button. The belly button's my mouth. And I'm operating my mouth, the belly button manually through <laughs> the mouth. And it's like I just walk up to the camera, lift up my shirt, and go, "Quaid, start the reactor. <laughs> um, Open your mind." <laughs> Rob Bottin, of course, back from Radical, oh, and he's got a fucking lot to do here, man, because there is all kinds of effects in this movie. I've, I've often said, and I've not really had, I don't think I've ever done a commentary on this, uh, but I've often said that. Um, I would love to have been a fly on the wall during the ADR session for this film because it would have. <laughs> It would have been Arnold and other characters standing in a booth going because <laughs> 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 there's so much puppetry obviously <laughs> of, of, really is. of people in pain. I should also say sorry I am I'm waiting for <laughs> uh, I, uh, here's uh, some unprofessionalism for you but tough um, I'm waiting for an Amazon delivery today which w will be a microphone because we've, we've actually upped our game and bought a mixing desk and stuff so we can do these audios like a bit better, and um, so it may arrive. We might get a knock on the door, but we assure you, it is the knock on the door that is worth it. Yes, it's sod's law. It will happen because we've literally been holding out, and it will probably turn up in the middle of this. Because why wouldn't it? This stuff's yeah. incredible. Yeah, they, they're wonderful. This is a really, you know, Robocop doesn't really have this so much to the same degree. It does to a degree, but miniatures, uh, map paintings, rear projection, and all these kind of bits thrown in. 
uh, they're really, really great, like really astonishingly good. Um, they hold up really well, don't they? And obviously in the era of high, high def and stuff, it, it really it does work. Although if we go to 4K, it may all fuck up. It seems to be the case. It's like, well, I watched um, the opening of Blade Runner in 4K and it just seemed to reveal all the horrible, like it just seemed like it was... It's too much. Yeah, it was way too much. It's sort of like, yeah, even the upgrade to 1080p was, was a pill because it's just seeing the kind of wire holding Sally up in Commando. And stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Shit. I mean, the, what I like about the aesthetic of this is because <laughs> this <laughs> this is you know this is not supposed to be taken at face value again, much like Robocop. It's got a huge satirical element and it's very referential. And yeah. The whole every, every single thing about it causes you to question whether or not it's a dream, including the fact that you know what well, in the God, what a whole point to make it little fuck yourself. I'll, I'll go on. You know, what I'm like, Sorry. um, you know, he's the fucking the the everyday build a normal <laughs> guy is the Aryan Superman, and but, even but, as a spy, he's ridiculous. But like, it's, it's yeah, you say that. Yet the way things have gone, like nowadays, it's very common for people to be in all, pretty yeah. much that shape anyway. Yeah. Like I go to the gym pretty much every day. I'm I'm not saying I'm in that shape, but, the, but a lot of people in there oh, who dude. are probably like roofers and god knows what else. People just walking around looking like that. Look like that a lot, yeah. This, so is, this is the end. Of, this is at the end of the day. Shit is era though, where people weren't expected to look like that. Yeah, but. here that doesn't make any sense. But obviously, it's set in the future. Well, you so. fucking know people that almost look like that. Right? Yeah, so yeah. Kind of beyond satire. Now. Yeah, and but beyond. I mean, it's funny watching Arnold back now and thinking actually he's not that big compared to some people. Now. He's it, it's so cartoonish and it's meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it plays into that. Henry Cavill's bigger than Schwarzenegger there. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I think unnecessarily so, to be honest. Because he's not like, you know, this Schwarzenegger wasn't a... This is not competition weight at all. It's just him in sort yeah, of Yeah, like, uh, Hercules in New York, it's competition size Schwarzenegger. And even then, actually, it's not, I used to think of, like, Terminator 1 as him being in sort of competition shape, but he's not at all. Mm. And it's the same I mean, he's still in incredible he's still shape. In, no, yeah, don't get me wrong, but, of, like, uh, but, like, actually, he would still have been bigger. Like, because Hercules, he did... He did do during sort of competition time, didn't he? Or he was still uh, competing. Yeah, with... he was still. He was Mister. I think they were trying to sell it off the back of him being Mister. Universe. As far as I know, someone will correct us otherwise. Sharon um, Stone. She looks so. He's down to bone. <laughs> and I, yeah, I have a Pete friend Sharon who Stone. who dated her. Uh, what? Yeah, I'll tell you about it off air because I don't want to name names. But he's 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 I a know, really I good think good you, good. I think you may have told me that. Good director, friend of mine. Yeah. Jesus Christ. He's funny, and he says stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, and then he shows me pictures. I'm like, ah. I mean, because that is an outrageous boast. But yeah. Picture it's didn't happen, very though. true. Um, he's having his oatmeal, and then he's putting in the protein, and it's fantastic, and it, <laughs> uh, the handy blender. Uh. See all this stuff. The stuff of uh, screens and news reports throughout Robocop. Starship Troopers, yeah, yeah. Uh, Total Recall, like the, the, the second-hand mi- imagery and manipulation through media are so key to. Yeah, tell yeah. Tell you yeah. what, their displays aren't four by three in the future. In your <laughs> face ratios. <laughs> Not so clever now, are you? <laughs> Does this actually give a year as to when it's set, or no? Um, I don't think it. I think it might, but it's kind of arbitrary, you know. I mean, because like Robocop yeah. never attaches a year, and why should it? What well, does it make? I always thought Robocop was just an alternate eighties. I didn't think of it as yeah, particularly I mean, the future. It was just. I think that fits. That's the best fit for it. Yeah. I mean, I think you're really just best off not saying anything. It goes widescreen for the window. What's yeah. that Academy Ration? Oh, that, that's, five, one. <laughs> that's the thing that Back to the Future Two didn't. It's like I don't think anyone's ever going to do it because it's obviously not what's outside. It's like a news studio where they've got a projected. Be the most miserable thing, but yeah. then it is. It is dystopian, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. Supposed yeah. To be, that's what you're, you're happy with your fucking green screen window, and it's actually like really horrible. And, and this is a world where people have fake memories and stuff like that. So it's kind of like yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's all about. It's constantly giving you images of artifice. Mm. It's it's artifice, artifice and filter all the way through. So like the skeletons and the X-ray, the kind of rubber two weeks mask, mm. like everything about it. Even the the kind of speakeasy set up in the in the bar where they hide all the shit. Mm. Like everything's about kind of underworlds and overworlds and and again artifice. Right. Because even the texture on the walls is a s- display. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I had to kill Bob. No, wait. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Look at that sculpture in the back. I know, I was just thinking that. What it's, is uh, that? It's Nunu oh. new from uh, the Teletubbies. It looks like a sort of sculpture of some sort of no smoking sign <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, what is it? Oh, I really like um, a, a good companion piece to this is that uh, this is quite neat because she's trying to distract him. Yeah. But is she? Because is it a dream or isn't it a dream? I, That's you know, the thing. Um, she was in a she was in a two part episode of Magnum PI actually. Was that right? She played twin sisters. 
Oh. In there. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. oh. I'm sure that inspired all kinds of bizarre teenage wanks across the world. I think it was early days for her in her career as well, so it was like she wasn't, um, you know, she was on her way up at that point. She kind of really went off the ball, didn't she? She was a huge, huge star, and it kind of ended up Catwoman and stuff like that. And yeah. Fuck like Basic Instinct 2 and whatever. That's right. That's right. With good old. Was it ESPN advert? Yeah. Good product placement. Um, so I, the short story of this, it's in a Philip K. Dick collection. It's, what I like about the opening credit to this is it's inspired by the short story. Yeah. Because that's what annoyed me about the remake. It's kind of like, oh, no, 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 it's not a remake of the Schwarzenegger film. It's a retelling of the... And, and you look at it, it's like, yeah, it totally, you've used, recycled so much stuff from the Schwarzenegger version. The story is 27 pages long. Mm. I think his name is Quail, not Quaid, or Quait. Yeah, remember. right. And he's like a kind of bookish, glasses-wearing administrator, and he never leaves Earth. Right. So, like, he has his memory disrupted, and he goes on the lamb on Earth, and it's all about how his... Uh, mind is disrupted stuff like that oh, okay. and this takes that and extrapolates it and builds upon it this oh, stuff it. is in Mexico I think oh is it this okay. location which is a good kind of concrete like futuristic she location. just looked in the camera shit extra <laughs> you shit girl extra. fired get off my fucking set said Paul Verhoeven <laughs> here we go get off my shit more blood get off my shit and this looks good <laughs> this looks good I, all that. I remember thinking that at the time when I saw this as a kid it's really like, great like, really that cool. animation's superb yeah um, I, I assume it's this kind of hand-drawn kind of rotoscope type shit, I don't know. I guess so. Or it's a real x-ray machine, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Arnold's got five bollocks now. <laughs> yeah. Probably always did. Mate, I've had a lot of I've had a lot of x-rays put in my genital area over the last yeah, six years. Yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> no, not over the last six. But you have, yeah. No, they're my balls. <laughs> um, I can never remember this actor's name. The, you know, the guy from Recall that he shoots later. Oh the, yeah, the turtly guy. Him, yeah. He's uh, one of the. <laughs> he, he's the cop that works with uh, <laughs> Ted's uh, with Ted's dad in <laughs> in uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Yeah, he was the brainy guy that has to beat Data at a game in Star Trek. Uh, Bunch okay. of Star Trek in this. Uh, okay, Mark Alimo from DS9, Star Trek. Rob Picardo from Voyager, Star Trek. He's in this. That guy, turtle guy from Bill and Ted. He, stri he strikes me as the male version of of the what's what's her name from Poltergeist. She's like Caroline. Oh, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Like if they were brother and sister. <laughs> See this guy, a oh, fucking hell, great commentary. I can't remember he this guy's is a name. proper in, like, dirty shit. Die isn't Hard Two. He's and like stuff. if Danny DeVito wasn't small, <laughs> like, that's what he would look like. I mean, he. I've always thought of this guy as as the pro the true. Super Mario. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Bob Hoskins, nah. It's all about this guy. Go fuck your mother, oh way. Yeah. They fuck with your brain, pal. Don't go to recall, drink a pint of cream with me. <laughs> yeah. Eat some cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel a lot better. Trust me, I know. <laughs> this is, by the way, as well, in, in a kind of... Uh... <laughs> oh, my fucking ulcer. <laughs> 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 Just constant tummy rumbles. So that this is again, if you want to look at the kind of the absurdity of this, it's like he's the super spy, right? Yeah. And the guy who's been sent to mind him is like this middle aged schlub. Yeah. It's like shouldn't it be the other way around? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we think. Great locations in this as well, similar to. Um, I think this is more akin to Starship Troopers than it is Robocop, but Robo I think it meets Robocop in the kind of. Um, satire area. Yeah. I, always, this I, sort of do, I love, love this effect. It's such a neat effect. Yeah. The little kind of keyed in nails. Um, it's such a thrown away thing. It's just like, oh yeah, just in case you forgot this is the future. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a place setter, isn't it, for the scene? That word processor with the monitor over it. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, um, this has, lo much like Starship Troopers, that has loads of uh, huge crowd scenes and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's. Do you think that's a lot? That's live. I don't I know if it was it's yeah. recorded and it's then pre shot. I think there's a lot of that of recreating things to show them on monitors. As a as a videographer, I just want it to be known that I find portrait displays vile. <laughs> they <laughs> yeah. sickened me to my stomach, and he, there was one on the wall as well. We're probably going were that right. way. No, no, we are. I've all, I've been asked for portrait stuff. Yeah, because um, people use it for displays, and and you see it quite a lot. It makes me sick. <laughs> It's shit, isn't it? Because what would you want to see? Some more of someone's chest? Oh, it's it? just, it's just, it ain't right. It's proper slimy salesman. It really is, isn't it? I like the super concrete Milton Keynesishness of it all. Like yeah, that. yeah. Which again, the Starship Troopers is great for that as well. That's where um, Superman Four was found, mate. Let's they're just, uh, but they are just, they're, they're, yeah, they're widescreen monitors turned on their side, aren't they? 
Yeah, and it's something you see more and more, and, and, and I, I do get asked for it as well. Um, you never trust anyone who does have a shirt without a tie on. I've got, he's got like a kind of vaguely futuristic suit, whereas Arnold's just not at all. But you know, yeah, kind of, I guess it's still quite eighties, but it's got yeah, like, it's that kind of strange cut. It's not like um, hounds tooth, or whatever, you know, know like as, as we recently discussed in Aliens, they've got those. Uh, the double tie oh no the, the popped collars what's them. double ties from is that Fifth Element that's, no Back to the Future Back to the Future's double ties right yeah. I think this is quite a good companion piece to Fifth Element as well um, don't bullshit me <laughs> the, uh, that was a very 80s thing with suits what have a low gorge which means where the the um, the collar meets the lapel right is very low down on the chest so it's okay. very relaxed whereas it's higher up obviously it's less so so I mean, this is this is the thing. Like you see, I think it, I don't think you're supposed to draw a conclusion this from this film. I think it's supposed to be ambiguous. Personally, I don't know what Verhoeven said or Chusa or Donna Bannon, but um, yeah, like, the fact that like it's great because it, it the whole setup beyond the entry into the dream is absurd anyway. Just look at him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then everything that is described to him happens as described. Yeah, and these guys aren't involved in his brain work. They just happen to feed him his exact life back. Yeah, you know, because it's even Melina's face on the screen. Yeah, when they, yeah. When they, you know, do the implant and stuff. But that's the thing, isn't it? You kind of like, as an audience, you can. I don't know. Like, it's one of those ones though where it's it is. There is subtext and everything, but you kind of it doesn't. It's le- more so than I think Robocop or Starship Troopers. You don't really have to get involved in all that. I think you can just see it as a surface level thing and you can kind of go, eh, it was all a dream or eh, it wasn't all a dream. It, was just a it ultimately doesn't matter, I don't no. think. Apparently it's supposedly something that Sharon Stone struggled with, um, something that she could, couldn't get her, her noggin. That back. and cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, that, allegedly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh so much. I just did a small fart. <laughs> this has been this has been the most controversial three minutes. With the cocaine, <laughs> <laughs> forgot right the jazz is all about. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm the <laughs> so uh, so stop. In case you haven't seen our Twitter announcement, we've been asked by Criterion to provide commentary to the new release of Citizen Kane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Ghost Dad. And Ghost Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney Poitier's directorial debut. Yeah. Ghost Dad. I love all these uh, these sets and stuff. I mean, they're pretty cool. Again, and it's something. And uh, Jos Vacano does these kind of great long take camera movements, much like. I mean, there's so many lines to be drawn between, between this and Robocop for obvious reasons. Mm. Um, Isn't there a thing as well, like with her? Like she's so. There's, that's another sort of very kind of. She's Janine from Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> The cartoon version, right, right. Action. But there's the thing of having female figures and stuff like that doing and saying absurd things, like because she, she, I'm sure she swears or something at one point, and it, that, it plays this whole thing. It's like it's like the granny in I don't know if you've seen Goldfinger, but there's a granny with a machine gun and Goldfinger, and it's like right. there's that sort of thing of turning kind of matriarchal figures into sort of that, that. That if you show that in your film, it's like the whole facade of society drops essentially because if a matriarch goes fuck it out, <laughs> then it's like. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Though? It's yeah, that sort right, of, it right. really, really, really knocks you on your ass as far as thinking there's any kind of safety in this. Uh, it's in like Mar- Marfratelli in The Goonies. Because it's right. a bunch of kids and they're being yeah. antagonised by a mother yeah. who's trying to kill him. You know, it's this... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so we see Melina on the screen, but we also saw the exact reactor from the middle of Mars. Look at those terrifying. <laughs> Do you want yeah. any of these? Like, huh? you know, when you walk past like a cheap barbers in like a city centre, and they've got yeah, yeah, yeah. mannequin that have all been faded by the sun because they've been in the window too long. Like. This bit's weirdly like this is sort of like weird science, isn't it? This whole design of women. Yeah, yeah. They have the wireframe with the boobs grow and stuff. Kelly LeBrock. <sighs> Sleazy. <laughs> 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 you absolute filth bag oh music by Jerry Goldsmith gotta say that if Brad was here he'd have killed us for not saying that sorry Brad you did say it earlier oh I did yeah maybe I was testing you I was not testing you I don't know, I forget <laughs> this, um, so this whole thing of drugging him then asking him what he wants seems a bit bar sackwards like <laughs> bar sackwards why, why would you like ask him all of that first surely she's uh so that's Rachel Tocotan 
She's in um, Mid to Black. She's in Falling Down. Falling Down. She's in some television stuff as well. Yeah. She's, she's very good. Favorites. I think she's an amazing. Yeah, she's really especially great. Especially in Falling Down. I think she's absolutely. It's fantastic. funny this because it does feel sort of like a Bond girl situation in that she was in this, but yet she didn't. Mm. You know, it's quite a lot with Arnold films. Like the girl, the women, the female characters yeah. are kind of like Bond girl things because they they're not huge. Obviously, Stones in this, but like Maria Cachita Alonso in Running Man and stuff like that. Like they just kind of, and even Linda Hamilton to a degree. They don't have these astonishing careers or whatever. They just kind of. Yeah, I don't know if that's a function of being in, in an Arnold film or or whatever. But I don't know. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I think that is just generally the curse of of. Of, you know of actresses in their career I do, and, it, and it isn't right and it isn't that's not to go off on a like an SJW tirade but it is it, I, I genuinely do feel for women in the, in the industry because it's like it takes them a long time to get a get a run up on their career just like it does all the rest of us but it does it into their sort of 30s and then they're kind of like well you can't be the love interest you can't be the mother you can't be the grandmother you could say they get a raw deal <laughs> um, no I didn't mean it's cheap no you're absolutely right I didn't you know what I mean I didn't no, mean it's cheap at that point and it's not like, a thing that I think has an easy solution it's not a thing of like let's all just you know I don't think anyone who professes to have a or claims to have a solution to that kind of thing actually does I think it's just a case of maybe we need to rethink some of the stories without getting rid of the stuff we know and love but like we do need to you know open up a market that I think is there for more stuff like that mm. sorry that was a no, really no, convoluted no, 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 way of going on about it but you know <clears throat> I think it's uh, <clears throat> and I don't think it's fair because yeah you do lose we, you hear female actors say that a lot as well it's just like the work just stops coming after a <clears throat> I mean people do buck that trend like Charlie's Theron and stuff like that but I, I think just because the, there aren't enough scripts around or stories around being told about you know those kind of women and I guess because in a like an obviously vast generalization like they a bit less so now obviously women have careers and they carry on and stuff like that but obviously the, ge the general thing was well once they hit their 30s they've settled down that's why a lot of these films it's like the ending would be them settling down yeah, with it, yeah totally. then that's it their story's over because they're going to have kids and be boring they're in love so. with Anna Schwarzenegger now <laughs> yeah which is you know see this is a, sorry this scene here with mm. lots of long takes again works really well great performances from these guys who are kind of nobodies which sucks for them but whatever but um, this now look I mean all this happens outside of his consciousness right because he's asleep yeah or does it because maybe you know he does sort of experience it and that feeds into his fantasy also, Schwarzenegger waking up in the back of uh, robot cabs, this and the sixth day. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Is it, yeah. it is an auto cab in the sixth day as well, isn't it? I think it? so. Oh, that's a film I have to watch again. I've got it, I think. I've got yeah. a soft spot for that. This yeah. Is the, the, the great Robert Picardo is the voice of Johnny Cab. Who? Robert Picardo. Uh, you know Robert Picardo. Well, he's, uh, he's the doc he's the EMH from uh, Star Trek Voyager. But if I show you a. P that, he did it, he, he, did, he just did a little <laughs> shrug because he's a monster. Hold on, if I show you Robert Picardo's picture, you're going to go, oh, that guy. Robert Picardo, hello. Uh, dear one. Man, he is disgusting. <laughs> I'm Johnny Cab. That guy. Oh, yeah, of he's course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's of course. In all I, the, he's I, and I, and I have, he was in DS9, wasn't he? Or was he? Yeah, he was, like, only, like, one episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sure, but I have seen him in and Star Trek. In and Star Trek. Yeah, he was, the, he was the hologram doctor in Voyager. Right, right, right. And then he's in one of the, oh, fuck, he's in uh, First Contact. Right. Oh uh, yeah, maybe that's what I was saying. You tripped the moors. Suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, you muddy, you piece of shit. I'm going home for a nice big plate of ding the magoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! Look, these, look at these moves. Ah, I've been ambushed by bloody <laughs> shitters. Ah, ah, put me down. Feed me cream. <laughs> <laughs> Stop straining. Ah, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> that stinks. Uh, put me down. Eat a salad. <laughs> put some toilet paper down. <laughs> Use the brush. <laughs> That's what it's there for. <laughs> salad, my wife. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting all this because uh, I, I have heard people criticise this like, oh, what? So now suddenly he's good at fighting, and it's like, yeah, because he's in his fucking fantasy, isn't he? Yeah, That's yeah, the whole point. exactly. And even if he's not, he's he's a reactivated mega spy. Well, yeah. So even if it's all true, that's the point. He's in amazing shape and he's a fucking super spy. Great shot, this. I that's love that. That's a great that. shot, yeah. And the, that cut on, I love the cut on action in particular. Yes. Because it gives you that great kind of concept of what he's done. Yeah, because quite often it would cut 
after the action and he'd just be left looking around him at that but it's actually the overhead's great that looks well. so like a what do you call them like those police things where you like the uh, you know when they do like a crime scene and stuff and it's like it's got a grid pattern on it and it's like you can imagine it looking like a kind of does that make any sense? No. I follow. But well, so they there. were all lying on the floor, and it's like th- there was tiles, but it looked like a grid, it, like it looked like a. Oh, okay. Almost like a lineup, actually, in like a kind of weird way, you know. And you kind of got all the lines across the background. When I can't remember who was it. I can't remember. There's a Japanese filmmaker. And it might be someone really obvious, like Kurosawa, or someone who would. I, I thought, bet it's not Tristan. Jeff I don't know. Japan. Jeff Japan. Jeff Tokyo. <laughs> Jeff Tokyo. <laughs> have uh, people dying dead on the floor from above and it would be in the Japanese symbol for death the arrangement of the bodies oh okay but um, it's a bit on the nose though isn't it it well maybe it's not a Japanese because if you if you make a film in English you do that I was going to know yeah yeah I don't know because in Japan people are like that is I I understood (laughs) I would I would arrange them into a cock it is a bit on the nose (laughs) it would be a cock and balls if I did it yeah (laughs) two guys with big afros dead (laughs) 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 a man in a purple motorcycle help me who was carrying milk and it's all like <laughs> splattered they're like. wearing pink jumpsuits oh dear <sighs> is this look, yeah he does that and it's like blood. the, the blood wouldn't still be whacked uh, it's true with a coagulator but again it's like anything like that you can kind of think of as being not real anyway and again this is a thing that he doesn't experience yeah but because it's all theatric is it part of his fantasy or whatever well, well that's it is it, is it yeah Michael yeah, Lyons. true. It is all for the benefit of the audience, but Michael Ironside, fucking love. Michael Ironside. He, he was nearly Robocop, but I think his size played against him. Oh yeah, because uh, he wanted a skinny guy. Well, so well they considered Schwarzenegger as well, didn't they, for Robocop? Which, which would have been good. awful. Well, there's I don't know. Of, it would have been different. But there's a lot of ECUs of gunfire in this actually. Mm. Get, Get out! out. <laughs> I mean, it's so obviously her. How yeah, I know, it, isn't it? Like. <laughs> I mean, this is not the way, Agent Sharon Stone. I just like, surely you're his wife. You could just put a gun to the back of his head whenever you felt like. It. Yeah, exactly. Like, why are they now? It does seem a bit silly for, the, for them to now want to kill him. Yeah. Like when he's their major asset or whatever, and it's like. I love how this film is so. It's so cartoonishly grotesque and brutal. Yeah. Because like he shoots her in the head, his supposed wife, and then has a quip for it. And yeah, like yeah. That, and consider dead a divorce. <laughs> But it's at that point that he's really bought into the whole thing, whether or not it's true. Yeah. Because he's gone through the whole... I mean, literally red... Isn't it a red pill or a blue pill or whatever it is? Oh, the guy tries to give him. I think it's like a red pill. Is it a red pill? He, he, he refused to be red-pilled. Um, whatever that even means. Though. Internet but, shit. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a kind of... That's another one of those, like, if you put the blood on the knife and wipe it across. Yeah, wipe it like, across, yeah. It's not how cuts work. There is some really great fight choreography in this. Um, yeah, it's not, and it's good to like seeing Schwarzenegger actually fight. I don't get me wrong. There's like lots of cuts and stuff in it. You got to accommodate this mad mountain <laughs> trying to move. But like, um, I, I think it's it's the editing and the in the cinematography that really kind of carry it off and make it, yeah. make it kind of gel. Make it gel. <laughs> he's, he's not the most graceful runner or fighter, is he? Cause I guess no. he's used to so much bulk. And now he's got that. He's got those granddad legs. Those kind of bow legs when he runs. Like. <laughs> I know, bless it. But that, I mean, when you think about the amount of weight and active tissue they carry around, I remember, what, like, you know, Kai Green, the bodybuilder? I, don't know uh, I do not. I he's, uh, he's actually in season two of Stranger Things uh, as one of that ragtag group of mutants. Oh, right. People. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, but he um, he's quite an interesting guy to follow. I don't know, some of his stuff's a bit weird. I don't know. But he. Um, he, they did like a, a like a YouTube documentary on him, and they were like following him around. And it's like he was in their van with them on the way somewhere, and he just falls asleep all the time because he's like Fuck. just walking around carrying so much weight, and it's Jeez. all muscle. And that's the thing you don't realize. It's like that's why it's hard on their heart and everything because it's like yeah, fat's really bad, obviously, but well, it's a contributing factor to fucking wrestlers having such short lifespans, isn't it? Because they're all huge and they smack each other around the head with chairs and shit all day. And it's active tissue, though. It's not like, yeah, fat is bad for you in all sorts of ways, but it doesn't require blood pumping around it and nutrients and God knows what else, where it's like fucking great muscles. It's And then bear in mind, these are people who, still, who, who have almost the same problem as obese people in that, that like, their legs can't, that were always touching yeah. and shit like that. And it's, it's nuts. Get for a lot of talcum powder. Yeah. 
I like the thing you did with the coat hanger. <laughs> <laughs> what an abortion! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this film the is sexy, up, isn't it? I'm pro-choice. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that was a weird. Thing. Amazing, that's a great tangent. Um, anyway, I'm, the just, film. I'm just thinking of some weird <laughs> sex thing, but I guess yeah. Well, it's just yeah. The coat hanger in the midget with this <laughs> Belgian band in the. <laughs> oh god! The guy looks like Stephen Lang a bit. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> He's obviously just a stunt man. A stunt Lang. Stunt Lang. <laughs> Battalang. I'm afraid your wife's assignment is to fuck Mr. Unions. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah, this guy, this guy's like Shane Black's granddad. Look, it's, it's kind of he's definitely only like 35, but has grey hair. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know people so like that. I just the, the red dot tracking device is exactly the same as in Robocop, isn't it? Yeah. It's just with a 3D majiggery poker. Do you think Michael Ironside is shown... He, I mean, he's obviously cuckolded quite terribly in this and he's sort of shown to be a bit lacking. You know yeah, I mean? well, this is the thing. It, and again, is that part of the fantasy? You cast against Schwarzenegger and it's like this kind of smaller, older, balding, literal cuckold. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder. It, he's... Because I think, yeah, it's it, again, it is this part of the fantasy. Because what's implanted in your head, like events or just the whole thing in which case like yeah is he a, is he a balding that's the thing because it, it, it's, it's, it's <laughs> well, no. don't say cuck it's sorry it's like, it's like the wrong kind of people <laughs> it's a shorthand <laughs> well, it's one of those words that's lost cuckold is a word that's now lost lost all me yeah, yeah because you're a cuck if you i don't know like the last Ghostbusters film, <laughs> yeah. and it's like no, no, that's when that someone mean fucked someone, your wife. Yeah, exactly. No one <laughs> fucked my wife because of because Ghostbusters. Or maybe they did. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best break to a pause. In this week. <laughs> I'll ask her when she gets home. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I did. I don't uh, know. They'll update on Twitter later this evening. <laughs> Hashtag because of Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh, for God. Ghostbusters. See, this is this is the thing, right? So, so um, <laughs> Quaid commits lots of really morally questionable actions. Yeah, this the bullet, the human shield here. Is, it's it, so comically brutal, and it's because <laughs> it's because Verhoeven has just got such a sort of cheeky blood drenched sense of humour that that's just funny to him you know and I mean? it, it just about morally gets away with it in that they shot him before yeah, just him. before it they happened didn't kill him it's just gruesome he didn't just grab him and put him in the way he's still they, reacting to it. look him. at those fucking squibs they are Verhoeven squibs oh to yeah, yeah, yeah. That, cause this is this is Mr. Kenny all over again yeah, yeah. Like, except nobody thinks that guy's alive I love that <laughs> he, he did throw, jump throws him onto the commuters as well and when he threw him as well the guy was still alive like he <laughs> jumped he's still alive there <laughs> run over it oh so I love it like it's so and that's so thrown away that he literally steps on his body oh, yeah like you're trying to show a kind of moral compass to these characters but again if it's his fantasy the moral ambiguity it's like he's still the hero yeah. even though he's doing questionable well, shit well everyone's a hero in their own story right exactly yeah that was clearly a stunt double with the jump <laughs> no no that's wrong <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about thanks 1080p <laughs> then Dun, dun. I can't really do this. What is the re- Total Recall theme? Is that oh, dun? oh, don't be a fool. Just remember <laughs> Total Recall. That one. <laughs> That's the one. Thanks, Cherry Goldsmith. <laughs> <laughs> Plinky plonky poo. I'm Cherry Goldsmith. <laughs> Look at me, I'm dead. Tinky dinky dinky. <laughs> that was designed specifically to offend Brad, who I know oh. will never watch this. No, oh, yeah, he probably will, though. <laughs> You know. Oh, I love you, Brad. Yeah, I miss you, Brad. Get back here. Lo- get back I'm here, or or get me a job there, and I'll come and see you. I'm wrestling around. Yeah, we miss our Brad. We do. We want to get a Brad back so I can do some uh, risky quizness. Some more beers down, Billy Ricky. Why well, have two screens? Tesla stereo. <laughs> <laughs> stereo. It's one for each eye. You can put on 3D glasses, and it's like they're there. there. Oh no, there's a postman oh, here. Oh 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 oh. I think he's about to put a bunch of leaflets through the door. Yeah. That's alright. 
I'll go and check, mind you. No, that can't be the microphone. Oh, Wait there. Wait there. I'll hold Duncan's mic. Hold court while I am. So this is my favourite scene of two men in a car with a two-screen television. Fucking those fucking displays as well. Again. Something my wife saw. Yeah. Uh, So, like, so, in terms of... Better not be a copy of Ghostbusters. <laughs> it's a copy of <laughs> Paul Feig's Ghostbusters. Um. <laughs> That's how I knew she was having an affair. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Internet. You already cleared that one up. <laughs> yeah. um. So, I don't know what... I mean, this looks like a fucking um, Piccadilly Circus, doesn't it? Yeah, or Times Square. Or um, yeah, I think the exteriors here were Mexico, but I don't know this specifically. It, it, it's kind of funny how this it plays in the future city quite briefly because the Mars stuff is seen to be not exactly subterranean but carved out of mountains and stuff like that. So mm. you know you don't you don't get many exteriors, true exteriors in this film. You get lots of set bound ones. That's true. Um, I just love the whole vision. The, this film's depiction of sleaze, mm. and it's funny because he kind of tumbles from this sort of despite being a builder, he's just got like a nice flat and a beautiful wife, and he just tumbles into this underworld yeah which is again it's sort of again is that all part of the fantasy or is it because he's really a super spy who knows this fucking guy you never see again yeah he's just a face on the screen isn't he who are you (laughs) who are you (laughs) it's funny like you remember the soundboards and stuff people used to do of Arnold it's like who's your daddy and what does he do that's the thing and then when you watch the films where they were taken from they were sort of jumping out all those little (laughs) moments because you heard them over and over and over again I love, this is so great because it sets up a whole sequence where he's basically wearing a turban yeah and sort of in the trailers and stuff it's like what yeah. he's some kind of battle Hindu or something like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know he's got the, the wet towel on his head that's always a futuristic thing as well like cut with cars having like sideways seats in them and stuff yes and, and fucking DeLorean aircraft doors yeah gull wings gull wing doors uh, oh, you do see him don't you? okay yeah but outside of the scene yeah I gotta go take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no! <laughs> Meet me at the coffee and cigarettes <laughs> yeah. emporium. I gotta go get the, what are those keys called for the disabled toilet? The radar key. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go get the radar key. They don't let me in the regular ones anymore. <laughs> oh, this old lady. Yeah, see, here's another example of a horrible matriarch. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, like a. Asshole! <laughs> It's a Ritz, that's Ritz. It's the Hilton on Mars. He does like a fucking Hindu bow. Well, it's not, not a Hindu bow. That's not a thing, is there it? There is a fuckload of uh, product placement in this. Yeah, there's more because again, being so far away from it in terms of time now. I mean, getting on for thirty years. It's like how it does. Product placement seems to lose its hold when it gets the further away you get from. It. I guess not Coke because obviously Coke is still around. But mm. do you know what I mean? It doesn't feel as obvious. Whereas it does in a new film, because I guess it's being marketed as a product itself, and then yeah, there's an argument for product placement. So I mean, it's, I don't like it, obviously, but it's it's a thing where it, when you put fake products in just in the background, it kind of shows up. It's what they used to because it all started the other way around, didn't it? With the film, it's like because you're not, and it's still true now that you're not allowed to put. Um, why does it even have why has it got a JC? <laughs> what, why have like a Let horrible one that anyone can just grab? Why would you even build an animatronic it's, it's, cab driver? That... It's not like it's not like cabs of a pickup <laughs> drunks. <laughs> <laughs> All activated spies, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, the, yeah. The thing about products in films is like technically you are not allowed to show anything um, without the. Uh, product makers permission mm. so you have to gain so it always used to be you had to you had to pay for <laughs> to it to ask them to show their product yeah <laughs> and obviously with certain things like the Bond franchise was, was one of the earlier ones adopters of it was to say to people well, actually we're bigger than you so if you want <laughs> I love that <laughs> sue me dickhead Johnny, <laughs> Johnny Cab's having none of it and again that seems so out of character mm. for him to say that except for that's so grotesque <laughs> Yeah, it's a really horrible thing. Great Terminator uh, ro- Robotine well. cro- creations. Mm. Not Croatians. <laughs> Robotine's <laughs> Croatians. <laughs> we are robots. It looks a lot like the uh, the ninjas from Robocop 2, actually. Is it? 
when the face is Robocop 3 Robocop 3 sorry so, yeah when it all kind of sparks and blows up yeah yeah. I, which I must be Botine as well because he returned for that yeah um, great you know industrial construction-y thing just like Robocop poor rats you just literally threw them off of a you haven't seen Rats Night of Terror that's the ultimate <laughs> uh, abuse of rats film Monopoly money fucking Martian is it Martian money? because it's red Martian dollar he does <laughs> Tobias Tobias <laughs> this is a great uh, yeah me and my friend Nick had a long running thing about Arnold Muppets in that there mm. are so many Arnold puppets well again that's the, all, like, the, like the ADR thing it's like somewhere out there there's a fucking room full of like Arnold Muppets he's got a hollow duke uh-huh. that's really great because it's, it's obviously someone else and they've mirrored for that shot who's in the shadow and when they come out it's composited yeah Although it loses a lot of colour, but then again, it's a hologram, so it sort of. It still looks really great, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a really good effect. <laughs> I'm going to fuck that later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to jerk off. He's, he's, <laughs> <jerk out. laughs> he's already thinking of the wanks, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he, he is what our dinner ladies would have called a mucky pup. <laughs> So if he could travel back in time, he would fuck himself. I assume this suitcase conti- contains this video and nothing else. It's, like it's enormous. Yeah, I know. It's just like they bought bought an iPad, made a custom thing to store it in. The future of portrait videos as well. <laughs> they predicted the rise of Instagram and people not putting their phones on their sides. That car is so pointless as well. Why would you make a car like that? Just buy a fucking <laughs> estate, man. Like... <laughs> Like, and then repurpose it like you don't need to have like this custom made car yeah, that's got like he's going through the Tesla Hyperloop yeah, yeah. which it turns out this week is just a hole that you could put regular Teslas in <laughs> which is did you hear about that yeah yeah, yeah. it was supposed to be like the super duper magnetic plate cars when in fact you could just drive regular <laughs> it's just a hole that you could put a regular Tesla in <laughs> amazing nice one Elon smashing it the um, this is reminiscent of Robocop as well isn't it the sort of disused factory yeah, yeah, the the industrial setting like um, those kind of things are really great because they it's a shame that they got so overused in sci-fi films, but cause it just adds, adds immediate production value and depth to your whole thing mm. if you have like this big factory. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, you know, coming from a lot of low-budget stuff myself, it is is the kind of thing that people tend to overuse because they'll get it and they'll be like, oh, this adds loads of value to my thing, and it's like, yeah, but. That's probably setting your everyone entire else has thing. Done it. <laughs> everyone else has done it, and then you end up setting your whole film in it because it's you know it's a kind of like filmmaking it. cliche of, of its own. Um, yeah. I can see myself doing the same thing. You know, I mean, it's like it's like if someone gave you a police car, you'd be like, right, this is in every scene. Of yeah. The film. Like, I know. Oh. I was like, what were we watching? It's like one of those little drain cleaner grabby things. Oh no! I like this. This whole idea is fucked. Like, you have to wait till you hear the crunch, and then. <laughs> This is pure Botine uh, effect. Yeah. And the size of it when it comes out is ridiculous. But look at it. It's like a fucking tumour. Like, how did yeah. he not know it was a... It's not a well, tumour. <laughs> I love how past Arnold's enjoying it. Oh, look yeah. at that. It's, they got his teeth right. Yeah. Blonk. Oh, there's blood inside the... Yeah, and how did, it, how did it fall apart? Like What you don't know is they put it up his bum. And, <laughs> and it worked its way up. brain there. or whatever. That's very sort of Matrix-esque as well, isn't it? With that little thing that goes inside him and... Oh, yeah, the little... The worm thing. Wormy, crabby thing. Yeah. Is it the kind of deceptiveness of size and things just... But this, that's another thing. It's, it's, it's physical impossibilities are represented a lot. So mm. him pulling that out of his brain. The other thing as well is the, the two weeks head. Yeah. There's, there's no way his head would fit in there. Yeah, There's yeah. just no way. But then they know that. It's not like a mistake. Mm. It's mm. clearly some kind of... You know, reference to the fact that everything takes place in a kind of unreality. Yeah. Or does it? Mm-hmm. I never played the uh, apparently really shitty NES game of this. Because there is like an 8 bit video game of this. Before, oh, right. you, you know, at that time you must make. Uh, See, this is another thing. It's also like part of the like, if you wanted to be in your own fantasy thing as a spy, it's like he knows what to do every time. You know, with apparently no training. Yeah, he's got all that ingenuity and stuff. He's got the smarts, he's got the strength, he's got the looks. It's almost as if it's all in his head. <clears throat> he's also one foot tall. <laughs> he's, he's the size and shape of a rat now. <laughs> Dude's just... <laughs> 
Stop saying there. Like he's not there, is he? You fucking idiot. Get your ass to Mars. Mars. Get your ass to Mars. Get your There's ass a song. Um, Fun loving criminals did a song with that. Well, get your ass to Mars. Get your ass, yeah. Called Mars. Mars. Well, the Arno Core did a, a did a film of song called Total Recall, where the co- chorus goes, "Get your ass, get your ass to Mars." <laughs> fucking, I love Arno Core. They're great. <laughs> I'll put it for you. Yeah, it's really good. Um, that's a great shot. I, I always forget this. Yeah. It's quite kind of Star Trek as well because it's saucer shaped and whatnot. But I mean, it definitely plays with kind of B movie tropes. You know, it's very much kind of all the Martian stuff feels very kind of B movie and comic booky. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is Dan O'Bannon and, and Ronald Chusett, the writers of Alien, adapted this. Mm. Um, and adapt they did because, like I said, they've they've had to spin it out from. Uh, quite short source material and I think much like Starship Troopers it's something that kind of expands upon and subverts the source material yeah because you know you've got Philip K. Dick on one hand and you've got uh, Robert Heinlein on the other got nothing but his Philip K. Dick in his hand <laughs> there's a Philip K. Dick on my hand Agent Buzzcut uh, he's got a woman's ass and a woman's <laughs> hands yeah. it's like the whole fat suit thing is just not part of it at all two weeks no, it's I... a great bit of ADR she goes like oh she's just yeah. like little, <laughs> they go, mm. Mm. Why would you do that? It's like, are you buying smiley it? Smiley, kind of. Do you think this is so? Does it error and just say two weeks all the time, or is it just designed to say two weeks? I, I always thought that it glitches out because he looks yeah. when it happens. It looks surprising. It look, it surprises him. And yeah. I think it's causing him pain because I guess it's supposed to be compressing his head or whatever. Yeah. So that was uh, Mike Mark Alimo who was Golda Cat in Deep Space Nine, arguably the best Star Trek villain ever. But there you go. Wow. If I didn't say that, someone would be in the comments going, Richard, Mark Alimo's there. Who's, who, what, that guy? The guy in the beret, yeah. Right. So if you've watched DS9, um, he's like the main Cardassian bad guy. And he's really, really, really great. Two weeks. <laughs> you yeah. never heard of weeks? <laughs> I brought two of them. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, get ready for a surprise. The fact that it blows up. I feel sorry uh, for the lady who had to play that because, like, it's, what, like I don't know. Maybe she has had a giant career outside of it, and I don't know where it, she had to do that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. She has. It's, it's not a very forgiving role, is it? It's very unflattering. <laughs> so this is so like, again, it's impossibility because as soon as it transforms, it's just Arnold in a dress. But up to this point, it's a fat suit, and it's like, of course, because it's you know, it's not necessarily real. Yeah. Love that, that zoom is so good. <laughs> yeah. That's pure gift material, isn't it? That's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone must have done that. Must have. It's so whenever someone says two weeks to me, I'm always like, two that weeks! Part, and they're like, absolutely. no, everyone's like, what? There's a small pool of people where that flies <laughs> yeah. so well, but yeah, yeah, it's like when you're at work or whatever, it doesn't really go. My wife still doesn't get it, but then I don't think she's seen. When someone says two weeks to me, I pull my head off and throw it at them, and my head says, get ready for a surprise, and it explodes. Yeah, it's just like, where that. does that bar go? That's like exactly, it's, it's a, a more Rob Bottin sculpture. That effect is amazing. Yeah. Sort of Arnold puppet underneath. This suddenly's thin again. <laughs> suddenly Mr. Universe. For a surprise. Great bit of compositing there. Yeah. Like a bit of blue screen, I guess. Wouldn't there be like limbs and guts flying everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the, this film does that when it feels like it. I love it as well. Like, that's just made of one pane of glass. <laughs> like, why wouldn't it be like I double mean, skin? You know, it's not like there's armed guards in an airport terminal or anything. Arnold in drag. <laughs> with, I think, fake tits on well, it. I think this and Junior are the Arnold in drag. Oh, yeah, films, yeah. I guess. Because there's <laughs> calves like flapping in the face. Yeah, yeah. They're like yours. Yeah, they're a little bit. Oh, that guy had a scientific calculator on his. Uh, on his gauntlet. No. In case he has to do any trigonometry. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when maths teachers used to say, you're going to be carrying a calculator around a few all the time, that guy took it to heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, well, I literally will, just to <laughs> prove you wrong. You're not going to be carrying a calculator around all the time, and you're not going to get sucked out of a window on Mars. Well, maybe I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe have those all the time. Yeah, yeah or just maybe have them him. automated, so they just do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, 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 press a press button. button, like... That requires the person who's likely to be sucked out of the window. To Is he wearing a big rubber ass <laughs> and tits? I th- I'm sure he's got tits. He's wearing tits. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. I stand corrected. Did so I can have a feel. <laughs> Just stand there mashing his own tits. You. 
cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole, you stupid, stupid. No, the wrong film. So. Coin. Look, like, how good is that? Yeah, it looks great. I love the the window as well. The sleaziness of Mars is so sold as well. Like it's so dark. Like this, you this see, like he gets hit by that pink hue, and then that just that the rest of the film now looks like this. Yeah, the whole rest of the film is just pink. That's the thing as well. Chemical compositing, though, everything looks washed out. Like his shirt doesn't pop as much suddenly, and it's like mm. the analog ways, eh? Yeah, look at that's this. Great. great little insert. Is that a little TV in the model, or is that I don't know? <sighs> looks kind of like it it kind of looks like that I don't know because you've got to so think great. about what was available because I think you know we were only just getting into computer graphics here I mean, sort that's, like what they that's do a fucking alien. model isn't it that's yeah like, yeah it's a great little kind of projected screen when she's in the escape pod yeah I mean, we were watching I think it was yeah we're still getting through 24 me and my wife and we're in, we are on season 8 now so it's nearly over but there was the new CTU in that, and it's a big set, and it's there's a big sort of glory crane shot of it in the first episode. And she was like, "Oh my god, look at CTU! Like, look, they built all that just for this." And I'm like, "Darling, that this is like seven months worth of shooting. Uh, like they build more than that for films that's like for a week's worth of shooting. Like it's, mm. it's like it's that's the thing you don't realize. Like, it's insane the amount of work that goes into these things for essentially a blip in a schedule, and then you know." So it's Skyfall, I remember that set on that, a massive MI6 set. It was like, when you think about the film, they, they use it well and they cover it well, but it's like, it's only a tiny part of the story. Like, it's not... Yeah, it's, yeah. It doesn't all true, take yeah. place in there, does it? That's what you see. You see, like, the budget on these films is massive. Like, the budget for building that set would have probably made, like, 20 fistful of leads or more. Totally more. It would have made yeah. more than that. It would have made, like, 500 or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, good old Mark, he can stretch a budget, can't he? That he can, boy. Oh, oh yes. Are you, uh, he's probably listening. He's sitting there going, you fucking bastard. Don't, <laughs> don't do my accent. You can't do it anyway. I don't sound like that, you fucking prick. Oh, yeah. we've, dis- we've dissed Mark and Brad. <laughs> no. podcast. Our two favourite directors. It's done affectionately. Yeah, two Very of my favourite. I've worked with them. So. I've drank with them. I've, I've worked ah. with Mark. Well, I suppose I've worked with Brad, but not on films like on our shit. <laughs> Worked with is loose in my case. <laughs> Mark gave me some food to wear a bit of makeup and screech at the screen. Nice. My finest and only performance. <laughs> There's some, I just did a music video where I acted and someone's put that on um, put that on my IMDb page. Nice. Whoever it is who updates my IMDb page has been very fastidious about it. Which has been, <laughs> been, I need a picture though. <laughs> Fast idiot. Fast idiot. Fast idiot. <laughs> Molto bene. <laughs> See again, look look at all the extras and the depth. I mean, yeah, it really yeah. sells the world and and all the steam and stuff. Like, what was the game called for the PS2? Red Faction. Thank you. <laughs> I, knew, <laughs> I, I, I just I was, was heading me off at the pass. I knew now. that was coming. I <laughs> yeah. knew we sooner or later we'd have to talk about Red Faction. Yeah, that seems kind of like total recall of the game in oh, a way. It so was it, it, like it, they it, did two, didn't they? they? Man, there's like five of them because there's the three, the trilogy, I think, and then there's like spin-offs. It's Tell like where I got off the fucking game train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the second one had Jason Statham in it what? and Lance Henriksen. What? As did the first, what? the very original <laughs> Call of Duty had Jason Statham in it, like uncredited because it was like the year two thousand or something. So he wasn't as much of a big deal. Uh? Yeah, he wasn't like uh, gyrating in a posing pouch, but. Okay. Mr. Brule Baker. Yes, definitely. And if you could send up a prostitute, <laughs> that would be fantastic. I worked in a ho- I worked in one hotel. The oldest hotel I worked in had a safety deposit box thing, and no one ever fucking used it. They've, they've done away with it. I mean, it's like people say about you know when you watch collectors and stuff. They're like, oh, I keep it in a safe, like in a deposit box in the in the bank or whatever. And it's like, how do you do that? Because I don't. I've tried. <laughs> I've googled it. Like, no bank offers it. And because that's around. like there's some big old school ornate bank you'd see in the centre of London. Yeah, you know, but not like your local fucking Lloyd's or whatever. We had the wrap party for Hack and Garden job in that. There's a there's a, um, I think it's a slug and lettuce or something in. Um, up near bank and there and it's oh, yeah. in an old bank and one of the there's like a private function room downstairs that's in a old vault like that you right. go through the vault door and it's like and it's got all those safety deposit boxes and stuff in it I like the old the Z, I think it's Zizzy's now off of Cambridge Market Square that used to be a bank you see the bank vault and shit oh uh, okay is Zizzy off Market Square is it Zizzy uh, it's an Italian chain yeah yeah I think it is yeah it used to be Lloyd's didn't it I think oh, sorry. that one was bank bank, bank lease. <laughs> 
Bankley's Bark. Bankley's Bark. That one was yeah. Barclays and Lloyd's was on the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fascinating shit for viewers at home. Hey, man, I've got five kids to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Take them to the dentist. <laughs> Do you need a cab man? <laughs> I'm a cab man. I love how it's got like a giant air conditioning unit on the top of it. <laughs> to keep it. Mars today, very good. Very, yeah. Very. So, um, that's Mel Johnson Jr., who was also in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I think it's DS9, he has a Cardassian. But oh. he's in a movie called Hideous. Um He's not in much, but like he turns up and stuff. Like he is, he is, and forever shall be Benny from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really love the reveal of his. His arms arms really really good. Yeah, fucking cool. And you know what? It always looks like if that was if you really were a big mutant man, that'd be the most satisfying thing. It's like just be like, oh, it's like you've been in a long car journey. Yeah, it's like I imagine how Gary Sinise felt when he finally got to let his legs out (laughs) on Forrest Gump when they stitched his legs back on. (laughs) (laughs) Although I I gather that was all just done with green socks and stuff, but I always assumed he had his legs like bent back for a lot. I think I just spunked a risky Quizness question on that gag. Um, I should have used. I should have. This is the problem. Sometimes I hold things back. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Use them. You are an ugly yeah. prick. I like that. <laughs> I was, yeah, see, apart from like Tony, who he mugs off, yeah. Quaid is he's shown to be compassionate to the mutants, which is supposedly yeah. what was. Uh... <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> Tony is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little one. <laughs> what's uh, uh, what's his name? The guy who plays Tony. Uh, he also in Star. There's loads of Star Trek in this man. Also in. Breaking um, Bad and Breaking Bad and such like it's Dean, Dean. oh Dean wait I'm going to look up Dean Norris because he's also Norris, in yeah. uh, Starship Troopers as is the guy who and he's Quarto. in Terminator 2 yeah Terminator the SWAT guy um, there are various bits of Star Trek as well I'm pretty certain uh, and you know I'd recognise him in this with that big vag on his face is this so did this... someone ask for me a chat guy <laughs> <laughs> no sure why not <laughs> Hey everybody! Hey, yeah. hey it's okay. <laughs> It's the penis and the vein, the vein. I can't even do it as Doctor Who. Hey everybody! Oh. This is the penis in the vagina. Hey everybody! <laughs> um, so th- this is a Hitchhiker's Guide reference. Of three, the tri- there is a, literally a, some a character describes a triple bested whore. Oh, okay. In uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, so I think it is deliberate. Must be. Uh, because Dan O'Bannon, it was as if Dan O'Bannon didn't read really fucking Hitchhiker's Guide. Ban O'Dannon. Ban O'Dannon. Because they put the triple-breasted prostitute in the remake as well. Yeah, yeah, Which, yeah. Which, again, I still haven't watched, but I know all these things about it. Which presumably it. isn't in the story. That the no, oh, dude, dude, he doesn't even get off Earth. Like, he doesn't even get off Earth. Yeah, yeah, It's 27 pages, like... Melina. There he is, says Dean. <laughs> Dean! Dean. Oh, oh, Dean! Dean! I've got a fanny on my head. I know you have, Dean. <laughs> or like a... a bo- <laughs> A testicle, the scrotum <laughs> flopped over one side. That's a pain in the ass in the makeup chair. That is. Uh, I can imagine that being. Which requires over five hours in makeup. Yeah. Got to look here. Got to look here. Got to look here. Draws a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that is a John Thompson far show reference far show, that's yeah. just sort of uh, tumbled out. Melina. Do it. Melina. She, I wish I could see her. <laughs> What's the what? Melina? Oh, it's it's, uh, it's with Bo Selector when he used to do Avid like years ago. Was it Davina? He goes, Davina. He just would come up with the stupid songs on the fly. It's like, I wish, have you seen her? <laughs> I, nothing could be cleaner. Or whatever, like, I would show her my wiener. <laughs> Thank you, please. <laughs> whatever, like. Look who's talking. Yeah. What they mean by that is you're insanely ugly. <laughs> so this whole. Uh this set is kind of like 50s diner meets brothel. Good yeah. Those black and white checks. But then it's like, uh, you know, 1950, 1930s speakeasy vibes when it all kicks off and they hide everything. Yeah, give me a holler. Like, yeah. The uh, little person prostitute. Let's fuck Mr. Universe. <laughs> this week on Let's Fuck Mr. Universe. <laughs> Those are very bet he would make, he doors have, for brothel. He would have made that as well if he hadn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> If things it's, had gone differently. Yeah. That's probably his life for most of them. 
What's she got hanging around her neck that's like attached to her ear or something? That's weird. Look, what's all that shit going on? I know, it's just a weird necklace, maybe. It's this wacky uh, costuming. Sort of silly amber, chunky necklace like that my nan would wear. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Hauser is quite an evil name, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a really evil sounding name. Well, has, no offence to any Hausers out there, but... No. It sounds like a combination of like a... A thoroughbred dog and a, and a Nazi. <laughs> well, it's the Mauser broom handle pistol. Yeah. And also the Mausers from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the most <laughs> evil robots of all. It's and like now... Broomhilde. <laughs> Broomhilde. <laughs> it's such a, like, hor- like no, again, no offence to any Broomhildes out there, but it's Broomhilde quite... Broomhilde von Schaft. It's not a particularly feminine name. I think because of the war, <laughs> lots of German names have taken a bad rap in English-speaking countries because so many villains were German. There, there must be some, like, there must be some Adolf descendants out there. Oh, sorry, Hitler descendants out there who are like, we have to have changed uh, there, there is a whole documentary about that. Oh, is there? Like, yeah, people have... The most of the people... You fucking ruined it! it. <laughs> <laughs> we were just minding our own business. Well, firstly, Hitler's descendants, uh, the actual ones were his nephews who made a pact and never have any children. So oh, wow. And then one's carrying the name. I feel so sorry for them in a way. You know, I mean, unless they were also arsehole. Well, they, they, like, uh, they can't have been. If Hitler's they half-brother them. joined the American Navy. Like, oh, wow. Defected, yeah, and they, were, they, were in the, they lived in the States. And then the, most people have allowed the Hitler name to die out, except there's a documentary called Meet the Hitlers that was on Netflix, and mostly people who carry the name Hitler have adopted the name Hitler because they're fucking mental. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, for in lots of reasons. So there's lots of like awful neo-Nazi fucks and, uh. you know, extremist lunatics and shit. But then also some genuinely mentally ill people that have done yeah. it for different reasons. Mm-hmm. There's one guy who's convinced that he's a Hitler's secret son and stuff like that. The boys from the Brazil. Boys yeah, from, yeah. Bra- boys from the, Brazil. The boys from the Brazil. <laughs> from that Brazil there. Well, anyway, that's a tangent. Yeah, so... I remember people being like, well, two of them are real, one's, one's fake. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, look at those, like, actually. <laughs> Wasn't there a thing about, like, the actress who played it, like, said her whole life was ruined because of this? Like, she claimed that She's it that fucked her. I know. Though I suppose it's a bit of a meme before memes were a thing, right? I uh, guess. Yeah. Three, three boobed whore. The triple breasted whore, I think, is the exact line from uh, to- for Hitchhiker Squad. Tri boobs. Troops. boobs. A tri mam. <laughs> Try a moran, catamaran. <laughs> catamaran. <What? laughs> catamaran. <laughs> <laughs> What's that poster? What does it say? Good giant it duck. <laughs> it's a duck. Look at my duck. <laughs> oh, I'm sleeping. This is if if his films were like his audio commentaries. Golden something bug. Okay. Here we go, fucking guy whose name I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, Turtle Man. <laughs> turtle Man. Hands, Turtle Man. <laughs> Down I go. Really, really great performance from him. And this, oh no, he's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. This film is this film is just chock full of foreshadowing and and meaning and semblance and everything. And and, and like te- you know they tee him up earlier. I would say this, you know, the kind of techniques that are used in this are things that were adopted by Edgar Wright later. And this even yeah. has the scene where they lay out the entire premise of the film in the first act. Right, so right, right. That Edgar Wright, always, well, at least in the Cornette trilogy, he, did, he does in most things. He has a scene where a character tells you what... Like, Shaun of the Dead, Nick tells you what's going to happen. Yeah, well, then he order. says the pub, pub crawl and all that, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I think there's something similar in Hot Fuzz somewhere as well. I love it. I was for some reason the line that sticks out for me when he does it is when he goes swallow it. Swallow. <laughs> that, that always sticks out to me. Really. The walls of reality will come crashing yeah. down. Roy Brocksmith. That's Roy Brocksmith. It, that's really important as well because this is a potentially a, a turning point in the whole narrative because he says to him, "If you don't do what I say, the walls of reality will come crashing down." He shoots him, and the walls of the hotel room crash down. That's true. Like, that's a very good point. Yeah. Was he sent by them as part of a sting to get him, or is? Or is what he's just told him coming to pass, i.e. his reality is collapsed? Well, it plays on our sort of fears as well. I mean, it's, and it's especially kind of true now. It plays on our fears of like what we're told by media and people with, with you know, interested parties who are trying to pull the wool and lie to us. And it's kind of like, you know, what's real, what's not? Are they telling us the truth? Like, well, that, and that's something that Verhoeven, again, in these films is very convinced, very concerned with. Like, Starship mm. Dream is about fascist propaganda and this... And particularly Robocop were about corporatist propaganda. Yeah. Like, and evil, you know, these are specifically about evil corporations, and Starship Troopers about a kind of evil government, though, from the, that government's perspective. Because, mm. um, like, yeah, the whole evil corporate thing is all over this because they've, you know, they've literally privatised air. Yeah. Know? 
And that's, which by the way. But it's even, it's Joe, not. Joe Dredd did that first. It's not, it, it, I, that's there definitely, but it's not even like they're a corporation. It's like they're just a dictatorship almost. In the guise, I guess, of a corporation. Well, but it's see, like, in, in Robocop, it's a corporation. Definitely, yes. In this, it seems to be some kind of corporate cartel at least. Like, well, that's but you have to do that mental arithmetic yeah, to yeah, get yeah, there. Do you yeah, know you what have, I mean? Whereas in the film, it's out. kind of presented as just this. Om- I mean, he, he has a boardroom and he acts like he's the head of a, of a company, but actually, he's more like a dictator well, of Mars, think, isn't he? It's sort of it's weird. Do they specifically name a company? Because in Robocop, it's like that's OCP, it's company. Yeah. Like, oh, no and, question, and, I, and you're, you're absolutely right. And I'm this, sure it is in this, but it's just like it's just less. I don't dwelled remember. On. Yeah. Cause, well, because in, in in Robocop, it's kind of the point, right? Yeah. Whereas less so in this. Yeah. Whereas in Starship Troopers, it's like boom, the Federation. Like, uh, yeah, that just is what it is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I can see it's less clear in this. And again, if you're going to cut, this guy is the opposite of Schwarzenegger, isn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. You send, you send him, to, but then he'd be the guy that he'd believe because he's like an egghead and yeah. And you know, it was, t- it was in the advert earlier. It's that, that, I love the close up when he breaks his sweat. It's such a great little detail. But and do you think that's what? Why does that tip football? him off though? I t- I, yeah, I know, right? Like maybe it's just is the aircon on? I don't know, <laughs> like, yeah. Is it just warm in there? Like. Because they do that, they, suit, <laughs> they do that perfect round headshot by putting a what is it? It's like a like a circular piece of I can't remember. What well, the Tom Savini used to put a button. That's right. Tied to fish and wire. That oh, is a red pill. A go. button tied to fish and wire from Titian's wax. That's right. And you yank, I mean, Yankee. whether that was what's a, it's probably what, a more advanced version of it. his eye. His eyes roll back in his head. It's horrible. He sells this yeah. effect really well, and like the brain matter is really kind of dark and chunky when it comes out the back. <laughs> Is it what is the idea that because he sweats he's not telling the truth? Because well, he sweats, he's human. Oh, I see. Yeah, because he's he's nervous. Cause he's got because the idea is that they go the water ready to come crashing down. Yeah. The idea is that he's just told him, "Oh, I'm not real. I'm an I'm an illusion. So shoot me in the head." And that's right. all he's sweating. Right, right. But again, is that all part of what's in? And and he's right. From this point on, the entire film acts out the complete fantasy as it was sold to us at the beginning. Yeah. Of the film. yeah. And he gets angry with him as well. That it's like the fact that he loses his temper with him and but then is he doing it for his benefit or is he <laughs> jokes on you I'll put it under my tongue here he goes now take the suppository and put it up your ass swallow it <laughs> swallow it Watch I don't know why like... bust it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spent Him my though. whole holiday saying that I watched for some, I watched the, 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 for some reason on um, there you go oh, there it is the the bloopers for Hot Fuzz came up there, and it? it had Tim Dalton like losing his shit at one point. He goes, "Fuck, bastard! Fuck, fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! The eyes are wrinkling his head, oh. slow motion jowls. His jowls wobbling. He drops out of focus. Spits it on him as well. When it sh- when he shoots her, it's really horrible as well. Yeah, you've done it. And the walls come because that down. that doesn't feel none of this feels real. It's absurd, and even yeah. the way she's like, "Now you've done it." Mm. And from now on, we kind of we cruise into the third act, and all pretenses dropped. Like he's and the he, savior of Mars. Yeah, and he literally like takes on armies of people. Yeah. That's for making me come <laughs> to Mars. <laughs> to Mars. But I got this red pantsuit from Niles Crane. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Niles! <laughs> for God's sake, Niles! He was drinking like a pink yeah milkshake. pink milk. Wow. It's like Star Wars, but... It's Star Wars, but pink. It's Martian milk. That's for Martian cows. Light beer. Who the fuck drinks light beer, man? Americans. I don't know. Look at... <laughs> when I went there, they were selling it everywhere, and it's like, what does that even mean? Yeah. Beer? <laughs> I think it means reduced carbohydrate, isn't it? <laughs> no. You're drinking beer, mate. It's To be fair, though, I take quite a dim view on Diet Coke, because I just don't drink Coke. Like, if you don't want it... Yeah. They've yeah. got DLC um, handcuffs. What downloadable content? No diamond light coating, which means oh, um, black, shit. black, and like powder coated. Um, they do it on watches a lot, that's what I know. They do it with guns as well. So right. it's, a, it's a finishing they put on guns and stuff. Very nice. Yeah. Abbott! <laughs> Abbott! You've just been Melina! <laughs> she said, said her. Yeah, it's like, and then suddenly she's a real badass as well. Yeah, which is well, and just the whole kind of James Bondy spy filmness of this, like yeah. the girl fight. I like the kind of uh, white blonde versus like Hispanic brunette as well. That's as true. A kind of, and their clothes are totally different and stuff. It's you know this 
it's just ridiculous. It is also a f- sort of a fantasy, isn't it? If, if only it was in jail. Oh, two beautiful women, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two beautiful women <laughs> fighting over you yeah. in front of a cabinet of Pepsi. Although, quite honestly, I don't think. I mean, that is literally a thing that kind of happens in a Bond film. In uh, from Russia with Love, the two gypsy fight. I mean, it doesn't quite happen. It doesn't happen for Bond, but it does happen in the film. See, that's one. That's one of those weird things where you've got the split focus. Yeah, the like, you know um, Reservoir Dogs does that. Yeah, there is a. A te- it's done in camera. I always thought it's the two things composited together. No, 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 no. It was done a lot in the seventies as well. There's that sort of thing. Obviously, someone worked out how to. It's a lens thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I always found it because like. The one in Reservoir Dogs looks horrible. I really hate that effect. It's so affected, though. In that, you know, what I mean, it's done it's to the, reference that yeah, from the well, seventies. Not it's done. Sp- it's supposed to look bad because yeah. Tarantino. <laughs> okay, because what I wanted, okay, was to make it look shit. Uh, but that's on purpose, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, so the trailer for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Any good? Yeah, very prominent young girl's feet in it. Very good. Yeah. As you do. But I'm going to watch it. I'm just yeah, I do. I, yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm, I'm not down. above all that. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not above foot. He's, touches, look, when, he, when, <laughs> he's, when, Tarantino, when he's good, he's great, man. No, he's on form, he's course. fantastic, you know. But sometimes well, look, that, it does get a bit. Mm. Inglorious Bastards video is the first time I've actually laid out my feelings about Tarantino. So. Mm. It's, the, it's, the, it's the good side of ambivalence, I think, is the short version of, of <laughs> yeah. uh, you shot your wife. I mean, this is horrible as well. It's like, I know they're cunts, but like, that's his wife. Well, again, and this is done for the. This is not done for. Quite yeah, he's not. Because did you know? Did they implant a whole narrative in his head that includes well, all this? Or, yeah. Because well, every because, time you show, show something that's not his experience, you can just say, "Oh, well, that's not real then." But it, but I suppose it's his way of saying that's why you now have a nemesis because you killed his wife. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's it's like a like, complete narrative. That's yeah. Put into his head. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> This, uh, the obvious link. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, the real one. I think I felt that. The obvious link here, obviously, is Philip K. Dick and Duck. this and but Duck Blade Runner. <laughs> Philip, K. <laughs> Philip K. Dick. Philip K. Dick. Blade Runner based on Duran Duran's Dream of Electric Sheep. Total Recall based on We'll Remember It for Your Wholesale. Mm. Fan of unwieldy titles for things, mm. but you know they're all they're both very much about artificial memories. Yeah, this is something that Philip K. Dick was all about. What are perception memories? of reality, and particularly, you know, co- memories as constructs, and that kind of existential. Yeah, thing of, you know, what is real, what is not real. Human condition stuff. Isn't I it? think therefore I am. Da, da, da. Um, That's a nice bit of work there, because on the reverse there, when they get the cab, the guy he knocked off the railing was like climbing back onto the steps. Oh, nice! Very That's good. That's quite good. There's lo- loads of great kind of, you know, chasing takes as well. Yeah. Heroes of Villas moving through spaces and stuff. This <laughs> whole Benny's sets, cab it? gets shot up so many times. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got five. I don't suppose you ever read the uh, the Red Dwarf books, did you? No. They were quite good because, like, what it was, it was just sort of a novel. It's a, it's sort of a mo- like an alternate universe, I suppose, it's like a novel version of those stories. It combines elements from episodes. Oh, okay. And the first book is in uh, it's one of the moons of Jupiter, I guess. Or means of Saturn, I can't remember. But the whole setup, like where List, Lister lives there, and that's when he signs up and joins. The whole setup is so like Total Recall, and he, he meets Rimmer dropping him off to a robot brothel and stuff like that. <laughs> and he dri- and Lister's a cab driver. Uh, okay. He's a cab driver on like Mimas, I guess, or something like that. Um, yeah, it's so fucking Total Recall Blade Runnery. Oh, okay. What is that gun? What you... It's a shotgun. It's a fully automatic it's shotgun. A shot. oh, I can't shotgun. remember the proper. That's a real weapon. I can't remember the name of it because a lot of them are weapons with stuff built on. Yeah, yeah. I think there are like Tech Nines in this as well. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, Al. Living on Mars just sucks. <laughs> People just drive. Well, there's, it... there's a fucking Best Western, a Ritz, <laughs> and a fucking uh, Hilton in this. Well, it's just so sort of every day, isn't it? The, the shootouts and gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this whole thing. It's sort of like that, uh, that, that line in Robocop where it's kind of like uh, where Rebels uh, blew up the Seas Airport in Acapulco today and she's like, yeah. oh, we were going there next week. Yeah, that's but right. in this, this news report is about kick, shit constantly kicking off. Okay, here we go. Here's your, here's your speakeasy shit. What was the, where was the secret button? Like, the light. You just hit the light. <laughs> Mr. Black. Yeah, yeah. You owe me $100 now. Oh yeah, this is the the catacombs, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite neat. It's where 
Fuck face lives. Where they groom cats. Belly face. Quato. Quato. I love to get blood. <laughs> I'm strong to the feet. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do a sex? I'm a prostitute. That was the original line. You're a monster. You destroyed that beautiful woman's beautiful triple boobs. <laughs> Bubes. Bubes. They're all muters, aren't they? What's that from? Why are they mutated? It's uh, because of the, they give them low quality air and it's caused birth defects. Oh. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's in dialogue earlier. And again, something like he doesn't he doesn't even go to Mars in the book, let alone there being a sort of subdivided society, a two tiered society, you know. So it's all this is all this sort of stuff of like just opening fire. Oh, yeah, she oh. like guts him. Opening fire on like innocent crowds and stuff was a thing that was quite prevalent at this sort of time. Like Robocop Two does it. Yeah. Um, what was the other example I was thinking of just now? That's there you go. <laughs> See, there's another thing that that image of a of a of a woman in this case a, a, a small person a little person basically, little person sorry uh, is that is that that real sort of corrupting image almost you know it's the same thing with the granny and Goldfinger with the machine gun it's that thing of you're not safe anywhere like if you've got this sort of I know she's a prostitute but it's like you know a, a, a diminutive lady or a mother or a grandmother or whatever it's like you, th- these are places these are like usually sort of safe harbour these are places where you would normally run to and it's like and they're firing at you and they're well there's a really there's a really good uh, they create the sense that you then yeah nowhere is safe on Mars yeah you know and before you get there you're constantly told what a shithole it is as well because everyone's when he's talking about going to Mars everyone's just kind of like really um Mars sucks <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah because you could just be sitting around in a bar and have a roof and fucking cave in or whatever the walls of reality come crashing down that's it these sets are amazing crashing down crashing down <laughs> yeah. you know, like Simpsons but Homer's under the car right? <laughs> and it's like propped up by like wicker baskets <laughs> <laughs> Bart's trying to film it gonna fu- he's literally going to kill his dad basically and he's like forgot his camera and he's like a 10 ton car comes crashing down crashing down he's like kicking it I, I think it was myself and my brother when we because we watched this quite young it was like well, why don't they just move the fans <laughs> that's, that's not the issue it's not that they're too hot it's, yeah it's that's not, that's not that the, the fans not out. even that the fans not turning it's just <laughs> it's just standing there going <laughs> I did a fart in that fan that's, that's, like Houston. that's why you're that's all really looks like. That's why you're all fucking mutated. <laughs> <laughs> Give these people air. <laughs> they worked themselves to death, but they also built a hole to die in. Well, you know, in the wall. <laughs> Cause people, c- people by instincts carve themselves a hole in a cave when they're about to die. <laughs> I mean, it's all about the oppression of an underclass, though, isn't it? It's yeah. The exploitation of workers and stuff like that, which yeah seems to run through the Verhoeven kind of thing. Verhoeververse. 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 <laughs> do it. Sorry. <laughs> Clearly, I had time to shave at some point. Let's do a kissing inside the catacombs. <laughs> Blah. Why were you hiding in there? Oh, that's uh, Lieutenant Hickok from uh, Robocop. Ah, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, they even throw on a plow punt. Yeah. It always looks like a kind of battle version of Tony Hawk, the English comedian. <laughs> the but there you go. This is great. Backlighting as well. Yeah. Oh, that looks so satisfying. It's good as well because he holds his sleeve. Like, so the, he can cover it up. Cause so often when they do that, you can see the hidden arm. Well, in it's the... like fucking when Arnold's supposed to have his arm hidden in Terminator 2. And it's like, okay, you're trying to hide one of the world's biggest arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, ah, okay. Even Carl Weathers in Predator, like, because the trouble yeah. is he's wearing a, like, tank top anyway. So it's like, it just. That has the benefit at least of being brief, but it's still kind of like, yeah. Mm, but it's in slow mo, you can still see it. Mm. I'm wanking right now. <laughs> I'm using my last bit of energy to rub one out. You're in portrait, right? <laughs> <laughs> if I stand back, maybe you can just cut. Remember, always in portrait. <laughs> <laughs> we 
he <laughs> fought for these screens to be portrait. He lived as he died <laughs> in portrait. I think these, these rebels would A, be trying to get everyone to convert to landscape displays, <laughs> and B, would want everyone to turn off motion smoothing on their televisions. <laughs> that's where they're forced to live underground. If I was to lead a guerrilla faction, that's what we'd be fighting for. <laughs> Our comment section is going to be full of people going like, shut up about fucking portrait. No, no, never. <laughs> never. And, I, and I would double never shut up about motion smoothing. Of what use are doors that are hinged like that? <laughs> <laughs> like they just you lose so much Hinged space off centre yeah. <laughs> let's see Benny knows this is all lives in my dick <laughs> 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 oh what was the oh man because they do I think it's Bill Nye as Quato in the remake uh, and I don't know if they just went for a straight Jekyll and Hyde thing or like Quato's on his bum or God. whatever <laughs> it turns around <laughs> Turns out the person I it's, You know when it's Ventura? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Find the reactor. I love <laughs> it. Oh, what's the guy's name? What's the guy's name who he's doing it to? I can't remember his name. The actor's name. He's a rapper, I think. But he's like, I suppose he goes like, if anyone comes down here and finds me talking to you or your ass. <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is what is great about this. I just the pure imagination on it's like he this film. He comes right? when he comes out of his <laughs> Yeah. The imagination on display here is... Yeah. Because you, you just don't see this coming. I remember watching this as a kid and just being like, what the fuck? Yeah. And the, he's, he's got a tiny John Belushi living in his stomach. Because <laughs> I guess it, it seems like he has to kind of emerge and he kind of take he kind of takes control. When yeah, he's yeah, emergent. yeah. It's like two consciences that can't... Maybe they were like mutated twins or something. You see, there's, there's this kind of Rob Bottin look to these sculptures, and you see it in Robocop, and you see it in The Thing, and you see it in this, and various other things he's done. It's hard to place. They've got a kind of sweaty, veiny, pinky kind of. Well, it's it's. I guess it. I guess it has happened in CGI as well. Certain CGI does have a stamp, but it's not the same. It's really not the same, and it's like these. The I suppose because they're they're pieces of art, and it's like mm. Rob Bottin was very much an artist first I think you know because a lot of his stuff yeah, he's an amazing sculpture whilst and everything. there's a realism to it it's a lot of it's fantastical so it's kind of like it, it, it allows for a lot more artistry mm. um, and I think that's why maybe yeah the, the, they all sort of have that look don't they yeah it's got his yeah it has his hand in it it has his style it's kind of his use of colour and everything like yeah. I said there's a kind of pink because that's all sm- you know slathered in Vaseline or something, isn't it? It's yeah, it's it's very hard. I I used to actually date a makeup artist, and she was. I remember her telling me like, she was always sm- smothered she always in Vaseline. Vaseline. Um, if only. No, <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, but um, that's a great shot as well. But no, that's amazing, incredible. The um, like getting painting something to look like skin is very difficult. You can't just paint it skin coloured. You have to put layers of blue and green. Oh, God, and all you know, like they punch pores into oh, yeah. models like that. Yeah, you know? it's only a model. Camelot, Camelot. <laughs> it's only a model. <laughs> Great transitions there. Little yeah, little bit edits and stuff. It's really nice. Brisket. <laughs> Brisket. I don't care what you're having for your tea. Grey lab coats. You know I'm authoritative because I've lost a lot of hair. <laughs> yeah, all the authorities. But not all of it. Fucking John Lovitz over there. <laughs> See that guy with the big head of hair? No authority. He's like an assistant. Yeah. That's where all your intelligence goes into your hair. <laughs> yeah. This is a great. Uh, I love the mystery of this as well. Like these, there are these aliens, and just that hand kind of hints at what they would have looked like and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Okay. It's like, what were these It's actually things? kind of xenomorph-like in that it's got the sort of two glued-together fingers. Shared universe. Oh, God. <laughs> Total Recall versus Alien. <laughs> Ten things you didn't know. <laughs> Man, so many... It, quite a lot of people seem to have taken that at face value, which is a shame. Yeah. Just have to keep doing them until they get the message. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. It's kind of funny, though, to me, because I sort of like the idea of people slowly discovering it well we were kind of hamstrung by it because the joke doesn't work if you explain it in the fucking time what annoys me these days you, oh, you'd have to release that video and call it uh, top 10 things you didn't know about the Expendables brackets what culture parody yeah you can't fucking, if, I've said this before on Twitter if Airplane came out next week it would be called Ernest Disaster Film <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's sort of like what you know all like these porno parodies they make Yeah, they're always called like 
they were always called like Deadpool XXX, a porn parody. And right. it's like, dude, no, there was a whole cottage industry of making great puns. I was going to say, what happened to shaving Ryan's, Ryan's private? Exactly, precisely. <laughs> what happened to Forrest Hump? Yeah. And like all of that, like dead porn, I don't know, whatever. Like, dude, just do better. <laughs> that's, that's not, that's something else. It's necrophilic. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I might, I might give him that one. <laughs> yeah. I have that one. So there's a thing, they see all the lens flares. Vahagan mm. talks about it on the... Um, he talks about it on the commentary for Robocop and to capture the lens flares like that you shoot at a certain I think it's frame rates and shutter speeds okay. to get that looking that way because I think in Robocop the point was they're supposed to look like burning torches because you've got your whole kind of Frankenstein allegory in there mm. um, it's got the smallest fucking Benny. magazine in it you're a fucking See, again, that comes out of left field so much that you think, like, that can't be... But again, I suppose it plays into the whole, like, if he is the sort of super spy, then that's why Benny's been following him around. Yeah. Because there's one bit he gives... When Quarto goes into his vault, like, uh, Benny has a sinister look. Right. But that's kind of it. It's one of these things that makes more sense when you know what's going on because it adds up. And it's like... uh, And it's good because he's a traitor, you know what I mean? Hmm. This this is this squib's great when he blows oh, yeah. Quarto's head off. Don't kick the baby. <laughs> kick the baby. No. I guess you can do that more when it's a yeah, less danger. I, what is it? So in Lloyd Kaufman's autobiography, I think he's talking about Tromeo and Juliet. There's an effect where someone gets their head blown off. And the and the guy oh okay, no just get shot in the head and you know the traditional thing of the metal plate and the and the charge to do the squib behind the head mm. like they had like a kind of quite green effects guy and he was like oh yeah no no, no I just do an explosive charge metal plate on the head blah, blah. and Lloyd Coffin was just kind of like uh, no I'm not comfortable with that and he kept pushing 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 and uh, <laughs> they agreed you can do it but you can do it on a dummy. And it blew the fucking dummy's head <laughs> off because this guy just put way too much. Expl- it's like, yeah, we could have blown a fucking guy's head off. Yeah, <clears throat> I have to tell myself that when I'm being rigged up by stunt teams and stuff like that. It's when you're on, yeah, it is when you're on low budget stuff and you've got some guy and he's he's putting things on you and his hands are trembling and you're like, oh, <laughs> what's going to so happen? Nice, uh, squibs, I've got really good results when I used to do that kind of stuff with uh, air pressure, air pressure squibs. That's what Mark used. No one could get hurt. Yeah, Mark used it um, um, when I got shot and fist full of lead and stuff. There was spoilers. There's, um, yeah, it was like he has a compressor, like a, yeah. like a almost like you would use to blow up. I, I DIY'd that. that from home base. I literally bought the compressor for spraying the garden and then some green hose and yeah. bunged it up, fill it with blood. That's some really good results. Yeah. I thought it'd be quite funny to dig out my student films and we could uh, commentary them. Okay, because they're awful. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be really could do commentaries on films I'm in, but that just seems a bit self-serving and narcissistic. To me. <laughs> well, you know, the benefit of my stuff is it's embarrassing crap. So it's, it's the opposite. Of that, I should right? do. I, I mean, I say I say that. I mean, that's what people do with their films, isn't it? I suppose I should do that with Mark and um, yeah, yeah, Brad. That's, we should that's do, legit. We should do commentaries. That's legit. On. We should do commentaries to our commentaries. <laughs> do a <laughs> Commentary cube, commentary section. Well, it'd be like fucking, um, what do they call it? The uh, uh, a program where people sit on sofas talking. Gogglebox. Gogglebox. I mean, it kind of is that already, isn't it? That's what it, it is, yeah. Bogglegox. It's got a Death Star. Made my boo. Isn't there a thing about, like, because the, the NTSC is a different. Yeah, so that's, is 60 hertz and Pal is 50 hertz. So it's like, it, it, do we get a more accurate representation of what people sound like? Well, ours is, I don't know about, I believe so. I mean, the, the 50 hertz is slower, obviously. Right. So there's that slight disparity. So we always, had, our video games were all, used to always be slower because it was 50 hertz mode. Right. So it's equivalent, kind of roughly the equivalent of like 50 frames but um, yeah. versus 60 frames. You still have that, when you shoot video, the Pal and TSC standards are 25 and 30 slash 50 mm. 60. So uh, I believe the 50 is more accurate. I mean, because if you think about it, like 25 frames is closer to 24 frames, which is what shoot film has been shot yeah. since forever. Um, so you go frame rates and <laughs> refresh rates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bastards! This, this, again, 
This is about okay. These guys aren't exactly innocent, but they're not soldiers, right? Yeah, and he and they, brutally murders them. The fucking spike through that really great effect again. Botin, Botin machine. Yeah, where, like spikes in the head and shit. And again, Look, great pains to show you how secure he is. Yeah, and yet he can just Superman his way out of it. Yeah, which he couldn't before, right? Mm. Mm. But it's, again, it's, it's, yeah, this is the trouble with Blu-ray. It's like you can see all the mold marks and stuff on all that. It's probably made of like <laughs> foam. It's a great idea, is it? Because it, it's really horrible. It's just like, oh yeah, we're going you, you're getting wiped. Yeah, it's not going to exist anymore. And again, it's that thing of like, well, what are we? Are we a collection of memories, or are we, that's you know. the thing? That's the, you know, are you your data? That was one of Philip K. Dick's great preoccupations. There's a story called The Electric Ant, where a man discovers he's an android. Uh, I think it's in the same collection as this, and he opens up his chest, and it's a series of kind of paper ticker tapes, yeah. and he finds out like if he if he cuts a section out of one, then for 15 seconds all of the walls in the world disappear. And then if he cuts out another, then all of, let's say, the fabrics in the world disappear. Mm. And his whole reality is dictated by these ticker tapes. But then it's like, hold on, if I take that out, if I take the walls out, how come I can see everything that's outside of my purview? Right. Like, am I a robot or am I, have I actually found the key to tinkering with reality? Right. right. Which feels so much like a fucking metaphor for taking drugs. Right, which right. Which dick like to do. And there you go. Um, but like, it's a, yeah, it's all about perceptions of reality and stuff like that. And Give this people, yeah. Quite like Screamers, the Peter Weller film, based on Philip K. Dick's story. That's underrated. Yeah. And there's Imposter with Gary Sinise as well, which reuses the costumes from Starship Troopers. Actually, as many so many things did, I think we've discussed before. That soldier armor gets reused in tons yeah. of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, quick! I'm having a party tonight. Why don't you and Melina drop by? Reminding Doc? Sure. Why well, do you fucking say it then? <laughs> <laughs> Just to be a cunt. Remind him, Doc. I hope you like spikes in your neck. Cause I no way. Hold on. <laughs> There's Prince Adam there operating Melina's concert. <laughs> <laughs> A pre-He-Man Prince Adam. <laughs> it's going in my gooch. Well, it's sort of like you know what you say about the ADR in this. It's like the whole concept that people bother dub porn. Yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. Just like you're standing in the booth going, ooh, ah. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're getting paid for it, like whatever. But like, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's, that's so simple as well because it, it just kind of pulls away and it's there it's the dude doesn't a guy get a spike right in the eye or something just now something like that yeah so one of these guys gets like spiked in the head as well like just he's able to like bludgeon them just with his bare hand that's you see that oh, spike that thing, yeah, goes that's in. going in this geezer's head yeah oh somebody's head there you go oh. <laughs> It's the that's way it's amazing. gone all the way through all his entire way through. head. And it's that kind of, it's really sold by that kind of shallow angle of entry. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I did a thing where I... Uh, I'm not proud of it, but when I hit him in the head, I farted. <laughs> <laughs> sh you should probably know now, because <laughs> it will register. Oh, acts to the guts. I, I mean, you'd be thrashing up. around screaming, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, he falls over very much like a stuntman. My brain is in my belly. I'm knocked out now. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that they always... It's like people die instantly from having a knife put in them. It's, yeah, it's not so how that works. I mean, it's the same with shootings as well. I mean, you don't fucking just... Unless you're shot in the heart or the head, for the most part, you're thrashing around having a... Yeah. I'm not very good time. No. I like the, uh, the... It's such extreme hot and cold lighting. Yeah. And this may be the kind of... Uh, there's a great little bit of visual matching as well. I think I'm not if it already happened. Or I think it's in here. I think Cohagen's fish tank gets shot, and then you see the fish gasping for air, and then it cuts back to the colony. And there that's all. right. That's just oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go yeah. Okay, he doesn't get shot. He just kicks over because he's a cunt, yeah. which is a metaphor for him being a cunt. <laughs> Poor fish. And then yeah. I mean, I like that his that character required a bum gin. Yeah. It's like, we, well, we started with the bum chin and got carried away. <laughs> he needs a vagina for his face. <laughs> it was like a consultant. <laughs> hey, everybody! <laughs> yeah, hey. 
Go on, just move the fan, you lazy bastards. Right <laughs> just spin it. Wind the rubber band up again. <laughs> Quickly, grow loads of plants. <laughs> yeah. It's your fault for not having a few fans about the place, frankly. I've, I've no sympathy. Don't <laughs> tend to your spider plant. <laughs> spider plant. <laughs> Couple of cheese plants in the corner. <laughs> Whatever happened to cheese plants? It feels like something from this from the eighties that never came back. Yeah, just doesn't sound like a nice thing to have. And it really doesn't, though, does it? It's like fart blossoms and cheese <laughs> plants. <laughs> we stopped using the word cheesy as a pejorative, didn't we? A, long, a while ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, my uh, bless them, Tony and Tanya, my A-level film studies teachers, they banned the word cheesy. They really hated it, <laughs> which I had maximum respect for. I meant in terms of a smell. I didn't mean. Oh, I see. When people say che- something's cheesy, that's different. But oh, I see. What like a fart? Cheesy fart? <laughs> no, like cheesy feet or whatever. Oh, poor. Or a cheesy duck. I love the way we like, zoom in on that. Like we needed to know that you had I a fucking loud. I love the zooms. Feet. There's so many fucking great zooms in this. <laughs> this fucking look at look at this thing as well. What yeah. a great bit of machinery. Like that. Like it's got kind of. A drill that's got bits on bits. It's a good fucking job you found that, Quaid. Yeah. We got bits on bits. <laughs> I remember, well, I think when I watched this, like it's, this was one of those things that I would watch with my dad as a kid and not really understand. And I used to think that like there was blood coming out of the machine or whatever because it didn't right. go into the hydraulic. Well, it's like that bit in Robocop 2 where they kind of dismember him, like they squirt oil back in his yeah, face. They yeah. kind of thought it was Robocop blood, but if you think about that, it's like, well, like, he's just a bunch of brain, like, shoved in a tin can. <laughs> yeah. No. Great tee up for a short shaker pun, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've just been drilled in the head. <laughs> wait, wait. I have put a drill inside your guts. <laughs> no, wait. Single entendre. I do love a good single entendre. You might say I put my penis in her mouth. <laughs> wait, Mr. Bond. Right? <laughs> 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 right? <Yeah. laughs> Screw you. Yeah, but... Move. Yeah, they do that in the... Uh, Oh, no course song as well I think like when the song's like wrapping up all well, the guitars are kicking and it's like yo yeah, Benny yeah. screw you <laughs> a band that I've singularly failed to see live even though I've been a fan for like 20 years <laughs> also mad that a Schwarzenegger tribute band has been going for nearly 20 years really yeah I remember finding out about them in like at least 2001 something like that yeah. uh, in, in the comic book 2001 Sorry, I meant the film. Oh no, cut this out. Cut this out. I blew it. Can't really be bothered to cut anything out of this though. No, No, we lost our. Pump the blood, Duncan. Pump the blood. That's a deep cut, which no one will get because it never made it to the public. Ha ha ha. Mysteries of Valverde. (laughs) The mysteries of Valverde. Um. Oh, the mysteries of Valverde. Look at this. This this pull out is great. Yeah. Composite of the two bits of. So I don't know if um, I tried to look it up the first and I couldn't find out. But so Rocco Geoffrey was the uh, matte painter for the Robocop films, and obviously you've got loads of great mats in those movies. And Rocco Geoffrey did tons and tons and tons of stuff. And I don't know if he was the matte painter for this. Um, and I wanted to have a kind of definitive answer to that because the mats in this are extensive and great and. If you see like him working, so like the, the OCP building in Robocop, like, mm-hmm. kind of yeah, yeah, the extended, the, yeah. The, the extension to make it into a skyscraper, like the actual paintings, that's absolutely incredible work. Kind of a lost, you know, we have digital maps now, so it's kind of a lost art. It, don't get me wrong, the v, VFX guys doing digital maps are incredible, but it's kind of a different game where someone's doing it physically with paint on glass and stuff. Mm. Um, I would never decry the digital arts because I fucking use them in my own minor shitty way for work, so. Yeah, and they do require a lot of skill. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, like a load of skill. Great music. I love this kind of ticking clock. Yeah, um, yeah. Theme here. And he does kind of, you know, I think Goldsmith does a kind of slightly spy-ish thing very well. And a great set, these kind of cylinders. (laughs) They would definitely be shooting each other, which is another thing like... Yeah, yeah. ...to the unreality of it all. 
<laughs> and and uh, you see you can even see them in shot look like. how happy he is when he's shooting <laughs> yeah exactly they're just opposite each other dude. it's great really because you've kind of forgotten about the hollow watch haven't you until now <laughs> did you play Duke Nukem 3D yeah Remember the hollow juke and that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. It was actually great being able to use that. It was a really, yeah, it was a clever implementation of it. Um, a bunch of other games did it as well, subsequently. But I think Juke was the first one to, to kind of do it. Because, you know, Juke Nukem was a big bag of ripped off things, but it, but it never claimed to be anything else, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it kind of used that as a, me to implement that as a mechanic, it worked really, really well. Uh, Rocket Joffrey didn't do this. He yeah, was busy okay. doing, I guess, Dances with Wolves at the time. Okay, yeah, because I tried to look it up earlier. This is, like, a, the thing is, he's a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> like, Wade is a monster. But yeah. then again, you know, it's all relative, isn't it? It's just the way he's so gleeful with, like... Well, it's also, I guess, the it. subtext of saying you think this is the real Quaid, when it's like, well, is there a real Quaid? Well, again, and there's the whole, precisely, and there's the whole metaphor played out again about duality and falsehood and artifice. Yeah. Like, it's, it's in every level of the film. And, and I don't think it gets the respect that, say, Blade Runner gets, because I know Blade Runner has more of an art house sensibility, but I think that's how Verhoeven slipped this one under the radar, is, like... Dress, much like Robocop it's dressed up as big and Starship Troopers dressed up as big dumb action when it's in fact just wearing those clothes to make a point yeah <laughs> me, me and my my brother and I constantly fought like this on elevators fought like this on elevators well the thing is Lift, we, we right. still say yeah thank you <laughs> we still say see you at the party Richter all, all <laughs> the time all the time for anything like it's just lost all you know when you're something you don't for so long it's just lost all context yeah. so I don't think we've ever ripped someone's arms off on a lift before you know what I mean like, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah in advance of a party <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it's the uh, the game Manhunt you which has the voice of Brian Cox in it actually not, not that Brian Cox <laughs> the other Brian Cox um, and there's features a bit where you basically chainsaw someone's arms off when they're hanging off like that and uh, that's one of the few yeah. justified see what the party Rick does I can think of Something that uh, Under Siege 2 Dark Territory kind of rips off as well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> First I fucked your wife, then I did this. It's just the most gruesome death. Yeah. And again, the sort of glibs, you at the party, Richter. They kind of look a bit like um, some of the thing effects, you know, with the sort of bone, like the kind well, of. Oh, Rob Botin. Yeah, you know, you know it's the, the kind same, of... again, it's, it's, it's the same mucky pop. Yeah. As Sergeant Ladies would say. <laughs> Dinner lady. As they served you boy uh, bubbling plates of evil. <laughs> well, I took a fucking packed lunch, man. I wouldn't eat that shit. <laughs> then again, I was a fussy little fuck as a kid. So there's that. <laughs> it's the reactor. There's no porn on it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael! <laughs> Stop getting reactors wrong! <laughs> not the end of the reaction it's the start of the reaction <laughs> I love the way it's a reactor that they built up and there's just this one on button it's like is the rest of it fully automated then you don't have to you like... just have to jam your hand on it and it doesn't even matter what species you are I now love it got Mars is maddest man for some reason I think I always find it really funny when someone goes who gives a shit like on... <laughs> <laughs> that's like one of the funniest bits of Forrest Gump for me because he's like shrimping bots who gives a shit about shrimping <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got to do this I've just realised I've missed. A, I've made a clang here I've missed a huge one uh, Ronnie Cox was Captain Jellico on Star Trek Next Generation yeah. there's an absolute pile of Star Trek people in this fucking uh, like, they, they keep revealing themselves to me it's like I keep pointing out Robocop people in 24 because there's mm. loads of them including Peter Weller and Peter Weller Paul Peter Weller Peter, Peter, Peter Weller's a double dip Star Trek he was in Star Trek Beyond and Star Trek uh, Enterprise and yeah no Star Trek Into Darkness Oh, sorry, that's what I meant, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Internet Darkness, so sorry. That's a clock radio. <laughs> <laughs> so I hate Argos! <laughs> <laughs> Just comes up, hey, welcome back to KWNBC. Hey, Howard Stern! <laughs> Robin. We're going to get some more Muppet action. Yeah, Maction. I wonder what the yeah I guess it's kind of bladders and pneumatics to make because they kind of bloat and wobble don't they so I guess they kind of bloat oh yeah, yeah big time yeah. it's a great effect it's a really horrible effect 
Yeah, I mean, it's insanely cartoonish, but it's like, again, is that... And again, and it's all part of a wider absurd thing. I mean, the, the, the sky of Mars literally goes blue. So I think, yeah. is it Verhoeven, somebody central to this says that, because when he kisses Melina, it bleaches out with white. Uh, and, okay. and I think it, Verhoeven said that that to him is when Quaid's lobotomized in the lab. Uh, it's like that's his brain getting wiped clean. It's like the end of the killing. There's lots of there's lots of wisdom. Like, it's like the end of the killing joke is um, Batman yes. snapping his neck or whatever. Because they weren't allowed to do any, that, that There was an edict from DC that they weren't allowed to do anything in, out of continuity at that time. Right. And I think Alan Moore wanted them to have him snapping Batman's uh, Joker's neck. So that's where the yeah, light goes out. The right? light goes out and the and the, the sound stops. Yeah. Kind of. Um, you know, which you're left to then infer it's the amazing artwork of Brian Bolland, whom I once met and then saw in a pub in Cambridge because he's from round here. Woohoo! There you go. So the um, I love the way the reactor works fast enough for it to save them. Yes. As well. Yeah, yeah. Just in the time it takes them that to get sound, down. That sound effect is the, is the Predator one, isn't it? When the, yes, it is. With the, the, with the lasers. Mode. Yeah. The laser, it's yeah. when the laser comes out. Yeah. That fuck, those eyes are really great, like the the uh, irises and stuff. Mm. This this is just mad satisfying as well. Like the, yeah, yeah, we're going into the ice. I, I love it. It's so good though. It's half a million years old. So aliens engineered a method to make Earth habitable, but abandoned it. And that's a big wider mystery that we never find out about. Yeah. You don't need to. It's just a cool, mysterious thing. What you don't want is Ridley Scott to come up with a <laughs> fucking prequel about it. Well, well, you see, twenty years before, well. some scientists from Earth went down. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Does his eyes pop out then? I don't think so. I think they get to the point where they're about to. Yeah. It seems that uh, the Fox. Yeah. Fucking. Oh, God. Oh, oh they do on Steam, yeah. The Fox Disney machine has authorised the next Ridley Scott alien prequel. It's it okay. has. Apparently, which is kind of was one of those things I was hoping. <laughs> I don't hope much is lost in that deal, but that's one of the things I could have done without, frankly. Mm. I really want to know about the Ponzi robot. It's one of those things with the two films in now to not do it. It's like, ugh. That's, yeah. Go on mm. then, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Go on if it makes you happy, Ridley. <laughs> for the memories of a lifetime. Recall, <laughs> recall, recall. Uh, I'm eating my Sunday special. <laughs> Carvery, that was a Toby Carvery. Yeah. Or a Harvester. <laughs> I mean, based on all the shitty brands on Mars, they would definitely be a Harvester. For sure. And a Toby Carvery. <laughs> Toby Carvery, Harry Ramsdens. But doesn't that, that, that sort of <laughs> level of soft tissue damage does not look like something you walk away from. <laughs> no. I like, it's amazing really how, as, as a, as a one shot effect, because it shrinks back down to yeah. really good likenesses of them both. She looks like pretty, like, uh, no, I won't say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it on, on a public broadcast platform. I've got to leave that well alone. I don't really know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> her one looks like it... All right. Her one looks like it kind of ages her and makes her look like a... Oh, like one of my mum's neighbours. That's not really nice. Thing. <laughs> Fair enough. You hear that, Julie? <laughs> yeah. You look like a puppet from 1990. <laughs> How about that? You bitch. <laughs> I'm sure she listens to me. Like, here's music. your air, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like? Megalodon. Megalodon. I don't know, we just got it to Jason Statham arse voice. <laughs> ah. Jason Stubbly Statham. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a minute, look up the video Jason Stubbly Statham and then you know what we're, we're referencing. Yeah. It's an air cano. I'm pretty sure they spent as long on the surface of Mars without atmosphere as, as what's his name? Did. <laughs> they just shrink back down. Mm, they're all right now. Oh, oh Muppets. Terrifying Botine creations. Yeah. This is definitely the kind of concert that, after all that, would ask for a refund for their food. <laughs> so we had we had some, one guy basically died in front of me at the hotel, and just as I was about to start um, CPR, two doctors walked in, right. started reviving him. So when the ambulances got there, 
there's two ambulances in the parking bay and some guy just come up and goes like uh there are ambulances in the parking bay and it's like yeah they're reviving a guy who nearly died and he's like fine but where am I supposed to park I don't want to get a ticket and it's like yeah no I would hope for you to get a ticket whilst a man is being brought back to life Fuck in the fucking reception so get some fucking perspective absolute shit hawk yeah really so there we go big colour colour palette change here Mars mm. is not as red, sadly not as red as this film would led us to believe. It's yeah. really kind of browny, rusty colour, but you know, hey ho. And it's nuts now that you can see literally what the surface of Mars looks like because that rover's like, yeah, you get that 360 view of stuff. HD fucking footage. There's, there's a great um, fucking HR Geiger like <laughs> swanning about in the background. <laughs> I'm still from alive. <laughs> I uh, came from here. Fire. <laughs> Whoa. Her crotch is on fire. <laughs> That's sort of the implication of that song anyway, wasn't it? I mean, My Sex is on Fire does sound like something you can get a cream for. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. It's this sort of gonorrhea. So obviously the film's kind of bookended with this image as well. And that's an Adam and Eve thing, isn't it? Yeah, Come massively, on. massively. So, it's, yeah, they're going to kiss in a minute and the kind of sun comes or white light bleaches out. And I'm, again, I can't remember if it's Vivian, but someone, someone's take on that creatively from this side is that that's when they lobotomise him, which <laughs> is just, just so bleak. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, fuck it. But then the whole thing is like, what's reality anyway? I mean, if he dies with a smile on his face, like... Or if yeah. he dies, gets zombified with a smile on his face. Well, that's always the, the horrible. That's one of the worst things about the sort of zombie type genre, where it's like join us, and it's like if you just gave in, it wouldn't be so bad. You wouldn't be running from this nightmare, and would you actually? Again, it's a mm. red pill, red pill, blue pill thing, mm. like in the Matrix with Joe Joey Pants. Joey he's, Pants. When he's like, well, fuck it, his ignorance is bliss or whatever. And it's yeah, like, it's sort of true. And my dick doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> what if I didn't shoot my wife in the head? Yeah. But here we go. Uh, and there goes your fuck. It. And that's the thing as well. It does that that kind of mysterious sting. Uh, Before it drops into the kind of triumphant theme, it does the kind of more mysterious, sinister music from earlier in the movie. Right, okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great um, theme as well, actually. Yeah, by, yeah. By Goldsmith. <laughs> Lycia Naff. Yeah, Naff, Lycia. <laughs> wow, just credited as Fat Lady. Amazing, which she presumably is the two weeks. And she's lady. like, fuck you, I'm out of here. Oh, Milt. Hello, I'm Milt. Two weeks. Well, Picardo. Whoop, 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 whoop. Two weeks to get the surgery. <laughs> Fucking oh, Vic, hell. Vic Armstrong. Oh, nice. Good there old go. Vic. I had lunch with Vic Armstrong once without realising. Well, no, I did realise it. I realised him, but next to me was. Um, Kevin Costner and I didn't realise he was there because he didn't say anything yeah Vic Armstrong's cooler than Kevin Costner well that's the thing I was so so besotted was I with the fact that I was sat opposite Vic Armstrong who was chatting to the guy next to him about a stunt sequence they were going to do on a motorbike or something right. I was like oh, I'm, I'm literally hit, I'm, I'm privy <laughs> to a fucking conversation about a stunt sequence with Vic Armstrong and in Vic Armstrong was obviously through the Bond films I've seen a lot in, in behind the scenes stuff so I was like I was properly like I don't get starstruck very often I tend to get more starstruck by people like that because obviously they've worked on an awful lot of shit it was like Roger Deakins and stuff I was like oh my god because he shot so much amazing stuff mm. and then yeah and then when like, we got up to finish lunch someone was like did you, did you see did you see you were sat there and I was like yeah Vic Armstrong and they were like who no you were sat next to Kevin Costner I was like what you were sat next to the water world guy yeah you sat next to the fucking postman <laughs> 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 I forgot about the postman yeah. fucking hell yeah Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. The, the, man. Oh, I just pulled my mic off, but I did it. I did it at the end. He pulled his mic, he pulled it, pulled it off. Pull, I pulled myself off. He's near porn on it. What's it all about? <laughs> Estrella, it says there, that's beer. Oh. Beer, sweet beer. Oh. Sweet, sweet can. John Carpenter, but John with no H, which is probably <laughs> how you'd have to do it in that line of work, isn't it? <laughs> Eric Brevik. PJ Rack. Bloody jolly rack. <laughs> I mean, this is... <laughs> Shartle! Keith Shartle. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Keith, have you Shartled? Oh, man. This is... I mean, this is the thing with these. When you when you do these, you get kind of f- fatigued by the end and you're just making fun of names. Start listing names. Which is, you know, something we've made an art of over the last seven years. <laughs> Marin County, California. My bike's from Marin County, California. So there you go. Oh. It's a Marin. That's the brand. <laughs> Industrial Light and Magic, so ILM. 
Goes yeah. between Ron Cobb, I think, did concept stuff for this. There's another kind of tie back to Alien. Um, right. There's a, the Boatine Effects Crew. The Boatine Effects Crew. Hardy Ziff. <laughs> Stuart Ziff. That's interesting. Mm. It's like uh, what's his name, Zim in uh, Get Shorty, Harold mm. Zim, which is, is what, there is a filmmaker called. Not Harold, because because Harold Zoid was Zoidberg's uncle, who was a film like failed filmmaker in right in uh, Futurama and <laughs> a rich doctor, you'll say. <laughs> <What is it? laughs> Where does he go? He goes, how much is? He goes, how much is bread? <laughs> they get you, should I bring you some bread rolls for your table? It's like, how much is bread roll? It's like, <laughs> uh, they're complimentary. It's like, we'll split an order. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Play the Nintendo game by Acclaim, it said a moment ago. Yeah. I think the, the theme is kind of reminiscent of Basil, Basil Poldoris' music for Robocop. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's Goldsmith. It's kind of swelling strings. It, it, it's like the that. swelling strings. It's also got that, the kind of, um, what's it called? The, what's that thing in the background? The photographer. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm getting a bit out of my depth of musical stuff, i got to say. It's sort of flutes and stuff in the background. Do you Woodwind. know what I mean? Woodwind, yeah, but... <laughs> 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 it's made my own woodwind. Oh god! I had a, sal- I had a Tesco salad for lunch. I just and that's yeah, coming back to haunt me. Well, there you go. Yeah, a recall total. Uh, the <laughs> remake of the French film Recall Total. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Audrey Tatou. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us on this journey through Paul of Verhoeven's Total Recall. Does that smell? It's Am I awful. Yeah, oh, it's Uh, I'm off now to vomit and uh, we'll see you again soon for another one cheers now goodbye okay thanks bye films support your 7th or 8th favourite YouTube channel by buying crap tat junk hogwash and filth at redbubble.com slash people slash Valverde shop